Hello, everyone, and welcome to Reimagine, a virtual arts festival brought to you by the Venice Mar Vista Arts Coalition and benefiting the West Side Food Bank. I know we're all reeling from the events of the last several months. First, the COVID-19 pandemic, and then the brutal murder of George Floyd. Yet another in a decades long list of unarmed black men and women murdered. Yet another example of the results of systemic racism and police brutality against people of color. Some of you may be wondering what you can do. As one recent Twitter commentator noted, resistance is not a one lane highway. Do not feel guilty if you cannot occupy every lane. We need all of them. Here are some resources. Since health and safety concerns brought our outdoor festival to the virtual world, for the next eight hours, the Venice Mar Vista Arts Coalition and the artists and musicians of Venice and Mar Vista will reimagine our world by occupying the lane of arts activism, doing what we do best through artistic creation. And now it's my pleasure to introduce you to Quentin Ring, who is the executive director of Beyond Baroque Literary Arts Center, another coalition member. Quentin, would you care to share our uh, festival statement with us? Thank you. Thank you, Lenore. Um, and hello, thank you, Lenore, and hello, everyone. Um, it's through art that we translate our imaginations into shared experiences. And it's through art that we can begin to reimagine our collective lives in the midst of a global pandemic and ongoing police violence and systemic racism directed at black Americans. As these crises have unfolded, we've all been forced to rethink ourselves on every possible level, whether it's the simple daily structure of our routines or the vast and complex underpinnings of our society and our economy. In the midst of illness, isolation, violence, and protest, we know that urgent changes are necessary and in the ongoing and in the opening of space for discussion to consider new horizons for how we live, we, reala we realize urgent changes are possible. In this year's annual Venice Mar Vista Arts Coalition Festival, benefiting the West Side Food Bank, we're dreaming those possibilities into being. As artists, as individuals, as a community, we're imagining how the world can and should look. And in doing so, we'll lay the foundations for something new, a world, a life, a society reimagined. Thank you. So if you like something you see today while you're enjoying today's event, please also consider supporting one of our wonderful local artists. And here's something else you can do. Um, today's event is a benefit for the West Side Food Bank, which is the primary source of nutritious food for uh, many of the food pantries on in the West Los Angeles area. Um, let's find out more 
by uh, having Genevieve Riutort, who is the development director of the West Side Food Bank, join us. Hello there, Genevieve. How are you? <laughs> I'm 
well, thank you. Good to see you. Uh, apologies again. We had a, a couple of uh, a little bit of technical difficulty, but here you are. And once again, this is Genevieve Riotort, who is the development director of Westside Food Bank. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm really pleased to be here. So Genevieve, can you tell us a little bit about how current events have affected your services? Yes, well, it's challenging times for us all. And uh, I know that um, black and brown people have a higher incidence of hunger, food, secure, food insecurity and malnutrition and have higher um, incidence of diseases that can be prevented by diet like obesity and high blood pressure um, and other diet related diseases. So we very much recognize that our community uh, of people who receive our food is suffering and we're doing our best to meet that need. A few of our agencies did have to amend uh, their hours or postpone service um, because of curfews, uh, but everything is up and running again as usual right now. Good, good. Wonderful, wonderful. And can you tell us a little bit more, Genevieve, about, uh, in, in more general terms, that is, about uh, Westside Food Bank services and your reach? Yes, Westside Food Bank is the food bank warehouse for more than 55 agencies that have food programs on the west side of LA County. Uh, most of our food goes out through neighborhood food pantries that give out free groceries. And that's where we've really seen the huge increase in need. Um, some of our food also goes out through uh, shelters, hot meal programs, and to homebound seniors and veterans, and through school programs. But really, the vast majority is going to families and individuals through those pantries that give out free groceries. Mm -hmm. And this year, we expect to serve almost double the amount of people that we normally serve. Um, mm -hmm. In a typical year, we might reach about 110,000 people. This year, we expect that to grow to about 200,000 uh, individuals who will be receiving our food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing uh, with that situation that uh, some of those who are um, experiencing hunger at this point are new to the experience. That is very true. Um, included among the newly food insecure are many of our audience today, visual artists, performing artists, uh, restaurant workers, gig workers, and others who've lost income and are seeking food assistance for the very first time. We had a story of one gentleman who came to one of our food pantries who is a musician and has two young daughters and uh, also works as a rideshare driver. And because of the complications around his different sources of income, his unemployment benefits were delayed and he really had no way to feed his family. And he came to a food pantry going, I've never needed food assistance before. This is totally new. And we were able to reassure him that the safety net was there. We were happy to provide food for his family um, now and throughout the crisis. And hopefully his unemployment benefits will kick in soon and he'll be a little more self-sufficient. But we're hearing a lot of stories like that of people who just for the first time don't know how they're going to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, if some, if any of our viewers uh, are interested in uh, helping out the West Side Food Bank, what should they do? Well, what we need right now is dollars. We can take every donated dollar and turn it into enough food for four nutritious meals. That's why food banks exist is because we can work on that economy of scale. So if you go to our website, which is WSFB.org, WSFB, like westsidefoodbank.org, um, and you can make a donation there to our COVID-19 response fund. And if you donate $5, that feeds 20 people. We really can be efficient with your dollar. We use more than 80% of every donated dollar on our program and very little on fundraising and administration costs. So you know that an investment with the Westside Food Bank is uh, a very uh, economical and efficient um, investment in our community. And we know that this festival and food and art and music, they all feed us in different ways. You know, art feeds our soul and food feeds our bodies. So we hope that you can contribute to Westside Food Bank and help feed our bodies while this festival is feeding our souls. 
And if you need food help, that's also the place to go. If you go to WSFB.org, there's a list of food pantries where anyone who needs food assistance can click. There's hours. They can see where food is available and how to find it. And if you're outside of the West Side area, you can dial 211 to get assistance. Thank you, Genevieve, for enlightening us about Westside Food Bank services. We really greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to donate throughout the course of the day. We'll be sending you little reminders here and there. Um, stay tuned because after a short break, up next is the fabulous Osmunda Music with her message of love and healing. Thank you. Hi everyone, Osmunda Music here, aka Rebecca Trujillo Vest. Welcome to the Mar Vista Music and Art Walk. The theme is Reimagine. Reimagine ourselves in a world where we can be together, support each other, love one another, have empathy, state our truth, and to be able to have um, reconciliation and all the hurts of the past and hurts of going on now. Instead of being a divided nation, let's come together and be a human nation or a even a being nation on this planet Earth, taking care of our Mother Earth, taking care of each other because we all matter. Let's bring in the light. Let's bring in the love. And um, just uh, something to leave you with from Gandhi. Nonviolence leads to the highest ethics which is the goal of all evolution. Until we stop harming all living beings, we are still savages. So, love and light and connection and support in lieu of COVID-19. Thank you for our healthcare workers, our doctors, our first responders. I just want to give some words of support and love to all of those that have felt injustice and who are not being represented and also anybody who has been harmed or hurt during this time. We send you our, our love and our prayers. The song I'm going to play for you right now is called Create Love. I hope you enjoy it. Creating our dreams Except 
drifting all beings Let's picture a world Where there's no device Magic in us Love in our hearts Let's create for love Let's create for truth Let's all be grateful For each other Making harmony Creating our dreams Accepting all beings Patience for others Peace together Magic in arts Love in our hearts Let's create for love Let's create for truth Let's all be patient For each other
Too 
don't you know dancing With girls with boyfriends They put the heart where their mouth is They put their mouth on him She does her dancing To piss off everyone In ruby red creepers Like Nancy Spongeon in Oz And she's my blue hair blonde And she matched my soul Does she manic panic Or let it grow I've been to Sunset And I've seen the shows But she don't buy the whiskey And leaves the snake alone I ain't no punker Just wear the clothes But you can't call me a poser When I'm next to her And she's my blue hair blonde And she matched my soul Is she manic panic Or let it grow Just let it grow, grow, grow So this is the reimagined uh, Mar Vista Art Walk, and this is the way we've reimagined it. We're socially distancing, this is, this is just a hologram. Uh, most of what you see here is a figment of my imagination that I've manifested through the power of uh, light and sound and good hygiene. Uh, we have a lot of good friends that we're thinking about as we do this. We're going to play a new song called Queen Sacrifice. Eric yeah. Freelander is joining me on guitar. What up? And I'm single dean. I am, in fact, single. So, yeah. so write in, call your congressman, and vote for single whoever dean. you feel is just. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do a song. One, two, one, two, three. Well, I ran out of an endless summer. 
grab my guitar and I grab my head Said goodbye to you in the only way that mattered She quoted the rave and then we did it again She quoted the rave and then we did it again My man over here, I over here is from New Zealand Rode over for a bone one night You can catch him at the bar, sleazy smart women We're all blind when the bullshit's out of sight Blind when the bullshit's out of sight And I'm dancing cause I can't describe good loving And I'm thrusting cause the truth's all in a twist My father lost faith in the family And a queen's sacrifice just made the most sense The queen's sacrifice just made the most sense I miss the good old days when the good old boys ran Las Vegas They erected the world's largest gentleman's club Your cousins get fleeced by the same Korean By the time it's my turn and I'm in love By the time it's my turn I'm falling in love And I'm dancing cause I can't describe a good loving I'm thrusting cause the truth's all in a twist Our father lost faith in the family And a queen's sacrifice just made the most sense A queen's sacrifice just made the most sense around and count my blessings at the bakery Where grandpa's got a gumar or two When you break a girl's heart she won't eat nothing Then she's digging until she meets the right dude She's digging until she meets the right dude The body and blood became dollars and cents Queen sacrifice just made the most sense The body and blood became dollars and cents Queen sacrifice just made the most sense The body and blood became dollars and cents Queen sacrifice just made the most sense The body and blood became dollars and cents Queen sacrifice Woo! One is called Walker. Mr. Walker took a scooter downtown. Though I had nothing to offer, he still showed me around. Mr. Walker has no use for a belt. He says some people have problems. But I knew that myself Yeah, I knew that myself But he Wants all the things fit for All the coaches and kings You don't go fucking up someone's liberties Just to unfuck up yours Mr. Walker Calls the Italian twops I heard the Irish are pig shit Now you're catching on Mr. Walker didn't come for a month But when he gets near the children It's like my brain turns to mush I mean he didn't show up But he wants all the things fit for All the coaches and kings You don't go fucking up someone's liberty It's just to unfuck up yours
Fade and smacked into infinity Like self-dying bars of stupidity She said the twist to all of this The twist to all of this The twist to all of this Freedom fits in any cage you wish Mr. Walker took me back to his cave this is where I do my best work With my centaur's brain Mr. Walker Said he'd come again And give rise to a franchise That would signal the end But he Wants all the things fit for All the coaches and kings You don't go fucking up someone's liberties just to unfuck up yours 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 Just to unfuck up your Welcome back to Marvis Art Walk Reimagine Set we're going to do one more song called Feast of the Inadequate Male by Single Dean. Well, let freedom stink In a cowboy hat with proper licensing Well, I am the last of that certain stick Your mother said my do the trick The paper's been crying a nation for kids how to read I've been hanging out with Mickey Mouse And now it's dropping all over everything So baby, come, come hither Before you know known as Sister Hipster Our nation has been out to lunch At the Feast of the Inadequate Male The Feast of the Inadequate Male Can you dig it? The Feast of the Inadequate Male But we've been starving over here You're like I'm Steve Sony an assembly line of funny cheese Now why should I learn to chew The arm seems to pull me through You're like those desert things But I swear to Christ I've seen the sky In the closing scene of a nursery rhyme Or maybe in my mirror last night So baby come, come here to before they reboot Adolf Hitler at the next Last Supper just happens to be the Feast of the Inadequate Male. Feast of the Inadequate Male. A feast of the Inadequate Male. But we've been starving over here. So go, 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 buy a ticket to a show that never existed. Where the good guy never dies and the girls get fucked all night. If I should seem confused I'm just trying to be amused There's a man up here on a cross And they're asking if he's lost There's a man up here on a cross And they're asking if he's lost There's a man up here on a cross And they're asking if he's lost There's a man up here on a cross And they're asking if he's lost So baby, come, come hither Before they send me back to Pittsburgh They're turning water into waste Drinking clockwork orange Gatorade So let me come back to the end of the world At the Feast of the Inadequate Male The Feast of the Inadequate Male The Feast of the Inadequate Male Of the Inadequate Male Of the Inadequate Male The Feast of the Inadequate The Feast of the Inadequate The Feast of the Inadequate the reason of the inadequate All right. Woo! Fuck.
Hi, I'm Genevieve with Westside Food Bank. We are delighted to be part of the Reimagine Music and Arts Festival. To all the artists and musicians, congratulations, and thank you for supporting Westside Food Bank. To find out more about our COVID-19 response, visit wsfb.org, where you can also make a donation. Every dollar provides food for four nutritious meals for so many more people who now need our help. Thanks so much for your support and enjoy the festival. Tell Homage to Judy Baca and the Great Wall of Los Angeles by Mike Songson. Judy Baca paints to interrogate whose monument where, whose story do we tell? Baca paints public history, inventory in the inner city. The Chumash animal spirits escape the La Brea tar pits, canoeing to the Channel Islands with a school of blue dolphins. 
California was Turtle Island before Gente de Rezon colonized. Long before Cabrillo and Portola, grizzlies roamed the flora of marshlands and willow thickets, the legend of Khalifa. Unipero Serra envisioned 21 Spanish missions. 44 Pobladores built the Pueblo. The Great Wall of Los Angeles travels chronologically, recording social memory, the technicolor trajectory of the city beneath. Spanish land grants and P.O. Pico, California ranchos, the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, the California Gold Rush, Sutter's Mill to San Francisco, Joaquin Murrieta, the original Zorro. Chinese built the railroad only to be massacred in 1871, the largest mass lynching in American history. The rise of California citrus, see the selective traditions, collisions at the crossroads, unsigned Indian treaties, the boom of the 1880s, LA mountains to the shore, women in the war, riding the red car, the California aqueduct, draining the Owens Valley, children working in factories, striking workers, the market crash, prohibition, you better speak easy or the cops will come. People's history profiles women and people of color, celebrating civic identity, honoring ancestors. David Alfaro Siquieros, Alvera Street in America Tropical, facadism in a whitewashed adobe. City fathers whitewashed your mural, but they can't whitewash history. Polyangular perspective, a hazardous metropolis, environmental justice. Boyle Heights to Manzanar, the 442nd Battalion, the Gopher Broke Unit, Brooklyn Avenue was Jewish. The Red Scare McCarthyism, division of the Barrios, concretizing an ancient river, forebears of civil rights, destruction of Chavez Ravine, popular culture in the age of white flight, farewell to Rosie the Riveter, goodbye to Dust Bowl refugees, the Great Train Robbery, illusions of prosperity. Baca paints what City Hall forgot. Luisa Moreno and the Brissetto program, Dr. Charles Drew's influence, David Gonzalez and Pacoima, the federal highway system, the birth of rock and roll stole soul from Big Mama Thornton. An age of appropriation, erasure and assimilation. Our shared human condition, a choreographed dance, singing gospel from the streets. We fight fascism at home and abroad. Who we can be in solidarity, honoring stories, uprising of the mujeres, mi abuelita, mural making and social practice, organizing the ofrenda, collaborate first then paint, Calling all couch potatoes, sing the song of suburbia, somewhere in San Fernando. Turn on your television set, turn up in your tracked house, take up the sword of justice. Be on the lookout for monarch butterflies, a new era of art and expansion, end housing segregation, right the wrongs of repatriation. Okay, boomer, come along, Coldwater Canyon. The battle for Los Angeles, reconciling historic narratives. Whose story do we tell? Whose monument where? that we were going to have a mural that would really show who we are, what we do here, and hopefully that it would touch people as they looked and they read and could begin to see all of the names, that it would open minds and open hearts. Uh, so originally we were just excited. I am Reverend Leslie Burke. And I am pastor at Unity Fellowship Church of Christ in Los Angeles. Um, and that church is the parent of Minority AIDS Project. So MAP, in spite of what conventional thinking would be, survived all of that. Survived the time when we didn't know how we were going to pay the light bill. You know, when we had a notice that this is a cutoff notice or that the doors were going to be closed. And so um, the mural kind of parallels because it went through, okay, devastation, its beauty marred um, in a wonder like, wow, is this going to make it or what's going to happen to us? But we have both survived. <laughs> I remember spending all the time at MAP and the church taking pictures of people, talking with people, trying to get in a sense of the institution and the place. 
and the people to come up with a design and a, that would work for them and for me as well. My name is Reginald Zachary. I was one of the original people who designed and painted the mural. The topic of AIDS, AIDS has uh, changed so much in the meantime, but I'm glad the organization is still there, so it's still relevant in some things. And it has historical value in the terms that uh, a lot of people were there when we initially painted it and designed it, and they're still there. So there's a deep connection with the community. I loved getting the chance to reconnect with MAP, reconnect with Spark, and to have that chance to watch this mural come back to life was incredibly satisfying. One of the things I loved at the very end of the restoration process was rewriting the names um, on the background uh, of the mural. And the fact that the mural serves as a memorial really came home for me when the very last day a woman came by and was looking at the mural and looking for a particular name and taking a few pictures to send to her son because his dad's name was on the mural. The finalists were sent home to do a new version of the proposal, which was good, because that night when I got home, I found a small book of poems by Octavio Paz, and I opened it to the page of the poem I painted on the sunstone, sunstone centerpiece, which read, My steps along this street resound in another street, where I can hear my steps passing along this street, in which only the mist is real. Well, this is uh, Calle de la Eternidad that I painted in 1992. It is a mural that was on Broadway mm -hmm. at 4th in downtown Los Angeles. And the idea behind it was really to talk about time and place. And when I saw the wall, it's just like the motion of it going, reaching towards the sky. You know, I was like, this wall is like art. It's just like reaching up into the sky. So I work a lot with symbols and try to reimagine them. So I went and looked at a lot of pre-Columbian symbols to represent the history and the ancestry of people in this area, in California, in this part of the world, the connection to the land. So I found these uh, pictures of these hats that were used ceremonially. They're, they're gold work, you know? So I thought, oh, this is like perfect. Yeah, so it's, a, it's, a, it's intense, you know, to go back into all the detail. Color is so important uh, to me in uh, any piece that I do. And this mural was always the red and, you know, gold and, and, and stone and granite mural. With turquoise for water and earth. So they, they have some symbolic meaning for me. So I like to get that balance. Because you have to keep going back and forth, like getting up really close and pulling back, just like when you paint a mural, but in this case, you're just working on the, the screen. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the technology is its own thing. So in a way, I can enhance it in ways that are new. So I'm really enjoying doing that, you know, the way that you can be more vivid in a certain way. And I'm really looking forward to seeing it when it's printed out and what, what you know, what that feels like. I've made many, many works of art in public space and I've lost a number of them. 
and I've restored a number of them. I also feel grateful for organizations like Spark. You know, it's very difficult to, to find an organization that really cares to preserve this kind of history. Today I'm going to walk you through how I make a face cloth. I'm going to use uh, about five and a half pounds of clay. And I'm going to wedge it up before I throw it on the wheel. This gets all the air bubbles out and conditions the clay so that it's easier and uh, ready to throw. It's a little softer. I've got a nice ball and I'm ready to go to the wheel. Once we can all be back together again, the ceramics lab will be a place that the community can come in and experience clay. We'll be doing uh, wheel throwing classes and hand building workshops and all, kind of, all kinds of uh, fun things here. So can't wait to have you all um, here with us. Okay, now I'm going to take my ball of clay and get started throwing this. Securing it to the wheel, adding a little water. leather hard so I can hold it easily and I'm just going to trim the bottom and clean it up so it's straight and nice. And a squeaky pedal. And I just take the excess clay off to make all my surfaces nice and even and level. Fairly 
happy with that, so I will take it over to get a nose. I'm going to make a little slip with clay trimmings. Slip is just liquid clay, so I'll use the trimmings from the piece and then I'll squeeze in a little bit of water, my sponge, and just mush it up. And this will act as glue to attach one clay piece to another. I'll let it sit for a minute and it will become kind of like a paste. I'm going to add a nose to my pot now. I sculpted some noses and made a mold to make them a little quicker sometimes. Sometimes I still do with my hands, sometimes this is the best bet for me. Here's my little nose. That's about where I want it. And I'm going to give myself some markings. And then I'm going to um, score the clay so that it will stick, kind of making Velcro. And then I'm going to do the same to the nose. And then I'm going to put on my glue or my slip liquid clay that I made with scrap clay and just some water. Make sure those marks are showing through. I'm going to do the same over here. And then I'm going to lightly press from the inside. Clean it up a little bit. Kind of squished the top. And I'm going to blend it in. to just blend it all together with a sponge. And I'm actually going to use this to make a couple of eyes. It's just the butt of my paintbrush. <laughs> a little uneven. Sometimes it takes a few tries. Now I'll clean these eyes up as it dries, but on the right path. And then I'm just going to make a tiny little mouth. There we go. A cute little guy. Once I'm done with the face, I'm just going to make sure the rim is nice and smooth. And then, so that it can all dry together and the nose doesn't fall off or crack, I'll use a uh, laundry bag from the dry cleaners or a dry cleaning bag and uh, wrap this piece up tightly. and let it dry out for about a week, and then it will go into the kiln for its first firing. So the pot has gone through its first firing in the kiln, which is called bisque, 
It was fired for about 24 hours and it reached um, 1950 degrees. And so now I'm going to glaze it. Start off with the rim and it takes about uh, two to three coats. I'm just going to get even coat here. After the glaze is done, it'll be fired again to almost 2,200 degrees. It's cone five. And then it will be done. Sometimes I embellish the faces with gold and that, um, that goes in for a third firing. But these are just going to stay white. This glaze is a satin white color. The glaze soaks up um, immediately into the bisque, and so um, makes it a lot easier because you can go ahead and touch it, and it doesn't come off pretty quickly. And my second coat on the outside, I'll go in the other direction to make sure that brush strokes or marks from the application of the glaze don't show. My second coat is pretty thick, so that's kind of my second and third coat. This dries, I'll go ahead and load it into the kiln. for following along on the journey of the making of this little face pot. This and other fun things are available on my website at www.christinacotnier.com. Thanks again. This is the mural that uh, I painted in 1991, and it's called Women Do Get Weary But They Don't Give Up, and it's on the National Council of Negro Women Building, and I'm out here today storing it with the crew from the Spartans. They are doing a wonderful job. I am just so happy that I got a chance to be uh, stored uh, for the community and for the world. It's important to the community, to the young people that live here. They pass by every day. It's a school, it's a church. And they can pass by and see some women that are positive, that sacrifice so they can be who they want to be. And this is an example of who you can be regardless of what. As long as you study and believe in yourself, can be whatever you want to be and when they pass by this mural every day they can see proof when I was designing the mural I asked my daughter who should I put up there and the first thing that came to her mind was Oprah Winfrey and I said okay I need some more famous women and she said Florence Griffin Joyner I said well, wait a minute let me put somebody from my era Sarah Vine the ladies that's out in front is Mary Bethune, Dr. Hyde, and the ones that don't have any names, they can be like your mother, your sister, or your aunt, because they're somebody too. They just don't get uh, exposure. I'm saying if it wasn't for the ones in the front, it wouldn't be the ones in the back. And that's what the mural's all about.
be free. We must be So this is the UCLA Spark Sensor Travis Digital Mural Lab. All the computers are set up for really exciting graphic designing. Actually, if you look over there, Jose, his, he's, he's building a city block there. And uh, each of the students are working on parts of the mural. Uh, we're working at a, a high school, which is called the uh, Miguel Contreras uh, Learning Center. Mm -hmm. And our students are working with high school students to tell the story of the high school students in this region and to try and create a piece that will be there forever. It's going to be in the cafeteria. Amazing. 23 by 35 feet. That's huge. Yeah, it's huge. And uh, we're telling the story of the experiences <coughs> of young people in this neighborhood. I'm talking about immigration and basically the labor that our parents have to go through. These are like the daily lives of our parents. You know, they have to work two, three jobs to, to like sustain a family. So this is one aspect of it, like where the parents going through three doors. And on the doors are like um, histories and movements of um, of the job. Hi, welcome to the print room at the studio at Spark. I'm Kay Brown. Come on in. Let's take a look at what we have. Back in 2010, um, Los de Abajo Printmaking Collective uh, ended up not having a home. Um, Self-Help Graphics building was sold by the Catholic Church and we were just, an, it was just announced everybody that occupied the building must leave. So we were pretty frantic and uh, we sent out a kind of a group to see what we could do because we had huge presses. Uh, there were seven or eight of us. We needed to not just have a home but have a workspace. And one of the um, members of the collective happened to know Carlos and we were kind of thinking well that's a long ways away from East LA so we ventured out here and met with Carlos and uh, Judy and um, 
all of the people at Spark at the time and told them our condition and wanted to know what we could do. So what we did was we made a proposal to Spark uh, that we would provide at least two shows a year, um, that we would um, encourage and make possible printmaking workshops, um, and they accepted our proposal and we were thrilled. This is um, an oil transfer, which is really easy to make, and I'll show you a little later a couple of um, a couple of really beautiful uh, portraits that a third grader, one was a third grader, one was a fourth grader, and um, this technique was started back in the 30s and uh, maybe the 20s, but anyhow, it's it's a very fast way to do. Um, a print. The next one is um, a lino cut and the title is Which Side Are You On? And it's, it's, I wanted to illustrate that you don't know which side that you're on until you hear the rest of the story. Of course this is Land, Liberty and Art. Emiliano Zapata. This is one of his famous uh, photos that I've reproduced but I made it contemporary with flip-flops. And land and liberty were the um, two really important things to happen in the Mexican Revolution, 1910. And then we add art, of course. This also is a woodcut. Um, I use a, a manufactured wood, so it's very, very easy to cut. It's like butter. It's really fun to work with. The next one is a nest is a, a, a dry point that really has a lot of character to it, but the inking is part of the dry point process. And you can get very, very rich kinds of things happening like, like this and these nice de delicate lines. That, the dry point is really, really useful. And I'll skip the next three, and I don't want to walk you in behind. <laughs> um, this is a monoprint. Monoprint means, again, one. You're only going to get one. And it's arranged, different shapes are arranged and then printed on the, on the uh, press. And the last one here is a woodcut. It's I think in Venice I, I became really enamored with the, the crows that we have. And this little bright-eyed guy seemed to like to walk around and spark and would come back and the next day would come back again. So um, that's kind of in his uh, honor, in Venice. First thing we're doing is mixing up this ink so that it's the right consistency. I think that's about right. Put in nice. We're going to print this. And this is called a brayer. This is the ink. And we ink up the brayer. It may look like the ink's going here, but it's not. It's going on the brayer. Fortunately, this is a double surface here. I'm going to ink up the object. I'm inking the back of it because it has more um, detail than the front. I think we're ready to go with this. I'm going to walk it over there to the press. Let's see what we get. Take the paper, nice and inky, and it's going to come out on that side. Let's see what we get.
Okay. Ooh. That came out nice. These are mono prints also, and they're unique. A mono print is only one, so you won't get the reproduction that you would get on a, on a woodcut. This is a mono print. It's actually um, acrylic. Uh, this is a um, silk etching, and it's made with with um, stretching the silk or similar fabric over a um, rigid surface. Then you apply medium gel medium until finally you have a raised surface that can be printed from. And it took a few days, but um, I can, and this was printed in red and then in black. So it has kind of a depth to it that you wouldn't ordinarily have. But silk etching is really easy to do. And if you like to paint it all, you'll understand right away how easy it is. This is a lino cut, just one color lino cut. And um, it lends itself again to, you can add color to it or you can leave it black and white. I like the stark kind of black and white that it, that it gives. These are pieces of kindergarten, pre-kindergarten children who do printmaking. And everyone is unique. And they, at the end of the 10 week period, we had a portfolio for each child. And they, they're just incredible. They had a great time, so did we. Well, I won't take it through the whole book, but they did such a good job. It was really fun to work with them. The kind of uh, introduction to the arts, and it, that's dance and uh, printmaking and poetry writing and um, theater, that Spark has been able to give the uh, Los Angeles Unified School District. We work with um, children from preschool, uh, kindergarten through, uh, I think it's eighth grade was the last uh, grade in that. And the kids are so um, enthusiastic. It's fun to see them working, uh, discovering what printmaking does. And then at the end of the year, we had um, a, a beautiful exhibit of everything that they had um, experienced. So that was that's kind of a, a great way to culminate um, a 10-week period. They get, to they get a chance to see what each other has done as well as what they've done themselves. So I think it's, uh, as soon as we get back to normal, if there is such a thing as normal anymore, um, hopefully we'll be able to offer the same experience that they get a chance to have. I, I, I really enjoy watching them grow like that. Spark has been an inspiration um, to all of us and then to me especially. Um, I just love to see people come in to um, experiment and discover uh, new things and they don't, they come back, which is kind of nice but they don't have to rely on having a mentor all the time. They're on their own. It's like setting them free. I'm Kay Brown. Thanks for coming. Pa' que quede lo que yo hago dura. Con altura. Demasiadas noches de travesura. Con altura. Vivo rápido y no tengo cura. Con altura. Y de joven pa' la sepultura. Con altura. Esto pa' que quede lo que yo hago dura. Con altura. Demasiadas noches de travesura. Con altura. Vivo rápido y no tengo cura. Con altura. Y de joven pa' la sepultura. Con altura. Pongo rosas sobre el panamera. Mm. Pongo palmas sobre la guantanamera. Mm. Llevo camarones en la guantera. De la isla. Hago pa' mi gente y lo hago a mi manera. Con altura, con altura. Esto es pa' que quede lo que yo hago dura.
Hi, how, how's everybody doing? I'm Brian, at, uh, a.k.a. Bird. I want to thank everybody for joining in to the Reimagine Virtual Art Walk, uh, benefiting the Westside Food Bank. Reimagine. It's a great title. I've had to reimagine myself a few times over life, that's for sure. I started off uh, as a baseball player, played baseball, and thought I was going to do that for the rest of my life. And then I uh, got an arm injury, and that kind of put a halt to that. Next thing I know, I, I found myself uh, living in the Colorado Rockies, living the mountain life. And, you know, a lot of my art is inspired from the times that I spent in the mountains. You know, the connection with the majestic mountain ranges and the feeling of peace that nature, you know, brought to my soul, it, it, it's, it's always stuck with me. And next thing you know, I, I work for the railroad, engineer conductor. After that, I had no clue what I was going to do. I had to reimagine myself. Can you imagine that? If you can imagine that, you can reimagine it. So it, it turned out to be a blessing in disguise. That's actually when I found my creative side. And I dove right into it. You know, I started drawing, painting, faux painting. Then I got into woodworking. And when that happened, the thought of bringing them all together in the one deal was so intriguing to me. So, and I've got, I've got a passion about, you know, preserving the environment. And so using repurposed materials was so perfect for me. So I started creating, you know, reclaimed accent walls, wainscoting, backsplashes, wall art, furniture. You know, my, my work takes me into people's homes. And that's my favorite part is, is hearing the customer's vision of what they're wanting, then I then I put the BRD twist on it, a little twisty twist, and, you know, just to come up with their vision. And but the best part is seeing their face when they are when they see the final product. The joy that I brought them brings me joy, and that's what I'm all about. And using wood brings nature into people's homes, adding an organic presence to their daily life. Wood also allows me to work in the three dimensional aspect of my art. There's a natural depth and organic feel that you can actually touch. You know, now I'm exploring with different mediums, metal and wood and greenery. You know, it, it gives an organic feeling to the, the, you know, has a synergy, you know, to it. We're all living in strange, challenging times right now. Finding that loving peace within and projecting that outwards is so important right now. We have to do that. Find your creative side, no matter what it is. Find your passion, no matter what it is. And, and reimagine yourself. Let's focus on bringing joy and happiness back into people's lives. BRD Designs, Bird, I think we have a few uh, mission pieces I'm going to do for the Kansas City Chiefs, Super Bowl champions. That's <laughs> right, the Chiefs, baby. So tune in for that. That's going to be a fun project. And uh I'm looking forward to uh, showing you progress on that one for sure. How did you get started 
on and what's your process for finding reclaimed wood? So actually, like when I first started, I started um, using, uh, I saw what people were doing with pallets. And so I started off with pallets. I had like 300 pallets at my place. <laughs> and finally got tired of like cutting all these pallets down, plus not knowing what was on them, this, that, and the other. So I started getting reclaimed materials from a sawmill and getting live edge materials and making my planks myself. Um, I love having the texture on the wood. It brings out the, the grain and instead of just being smooth, it gives it, you know, more organic feel with the textures on the woods. And I, I use that on accent walls and wainscoting and backsplashes. What they're showing right now is uh, my company sign, a prototype company sign. Um, it's It was part of this whole deal where I'm trying to incorporate metal and wood and greenery into my pieces. So what you've got there, you've got metal in the background, you've got two layers of mountains and wood, then you have greenery and metal is also uh, the river. Plus I've got tree branches. I've got a thing with trees, it's what it is. So let's, let's deal, all deal with it. <laughs> and, uh, but no, yeah, that's kind of what, uh, and that one there, that's, that's one of my favorite pieces. I made that for a customer four years ago, maybe something like that. They're both six foot tall, two and a half feet wide. Um, he's got to hang them in his house right now. That was actually in a gallery, but if you look closely, it's also a reversible canvas to where there's a human figure in it. There's also, I think, three or four arrows in it. And I've added some, some turquoise in there to make it pop. But like I said, it's reversible, so you can change it. If you're not feeling it anymore, you just change it around. It's pretty cool. And there's a table there that, that I made out of cedar, reclaimed cedar, and just use different uh, painting techniques on it and stain to create that, uh, that coffee table. There's another picture of, and give you a size of how big they are uh, with me standing with them. And there you have the opposite view to where if you see there's a human figure, kind of like the, the drawing David. Um, that's kind of what I came up with it on. But it, it, this piece was, oh, there it is. There's my bar. I love that bar. So this bar I found somebody's house sitting out in the rain for 10 years stripped it all down refaced everything but i kept the 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 original metal banding around the edge of it and i also put these metal tear outs in there just to do something different you know than what whatever else i see out there of course i'm an artist i want to do things different than everybody else but it it, it gives it the three-dimensional aspect too and it's a it's a cool little bar that you can have in the back of your house or in your garage or whatever you know any place that you have for it looking to see what picture comes up next here there that's uh so that's a house that's a lake house and so in this house i did I did a rustic wainscoting all throughout the living room, the dining room, and the kitchen. And, and it was one of those things that they were just like, we want some grays, we want some browns, we want some dark browns, light browns, natural tones. And uh, so that, that's the final product of some wainscoting I did on a lake house. Okay. And you can, you can see it. And there, that's an that's a airplane hanger. I, so this here, I actually built the whole lobby, framed it in, sheetrocked it, did the wainscoting, and that wainscoting there actually has the same metal tear outs as the bar you saw earlier. Next one, please. But yeah, that 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 was a fun project because it's it's got a little bit of everything. It's got textured walls, and I, it's hard to see in that picture, but faux painted walls also. Now, this one here is called shipwreck. So imagine yourself out at sea. You're in a big storm. You get knocked out. And you come to and you're looking through a hole in your hole. <laughs> but hey, you're, you're alive. You're safe. You're on rocky ground. You're on solid ground. Your, your ship is wrecked, but you're all right. 
<laughs> so that's a, I'd like to do a whole series of shipwreck actually. The, and I did the same kind of tear out deals with wood on that one. Next slide, please. This one I call flow of abundance. It's a, it's a, it's a four canvas piece and basically it looks like flowing water in every direction. And that's been a big thing in my life is flow of abundance, flow of, excuse me, flow of abundance and just the law of attraction. And cause we're all energy and that's what we need to project is happy, joyful energy into this world. There's a, a piece, this one here, I just made from some leftover pieces that I had for an accent wall I did, you know, just sitting around the shop. So I just kind of put together a piece. It's got a face in it. It's got ball diamonds in it because I'm a ball player. And, but it always reminds me, you know, inspire to inspire. You know, what can I do to make things better in my life and anybody's life around me? Just from positivity. Next slide, please. That one there. Um, oh, we flipped two. So, yeah, there we go. The Chiefs, baby, Mahomes. Um, so that's made out of wood with different colored stains. That's uh, my tribute to Mahomes. And it's a little taste of what you're going to get on the Super Bowl piece that I'm going to make. I'm going to add Patrick Mahomes, and I'm going to have Andy Reid in it, and, of course, the trophy. We'll see what else comes of it. Next slide, please. Yeah, that one there, um, I call that heaven and home. There's an H in the middle. It's using different colors. Uh, I love blues and turquoise. And also, that's leftover pieces from an accent wall I did. And so I just took those and, and created that one. Next slide, please. Aha, my guitar, mess that sucker. <laughs> But I love that guitar holder there. So that's the same thing. Leftover pieces from an accent wall that I did. And I, I created a guitar holder for myself. On the very top of it, it's got a live edge on it. I love using live edge on stuff. It's got the, the texture and, and the feel of nature organic. And I love that, bringing it into your home. Next slide, please. That's a piece I did for a lake. Uh, it's called Lakewood. And yeah, a customer came to me and was like, hey, you know, I want to, I want to, I'd like you to make me a piece of the lake. So that one there, it's like everything's hand drawn. I cut everything out by hand. Um, lake wood is cut out and also 3D. And then I put a nautical sign on it. That was a fun piece. There, that one, uh, that's a uh, mountains. I love the mountains. And so it's a double, you know, the back range of the mountains is cut out of wood. Then I painted it and I put another layer of, of mountains in front of it and used greenery and um, using the metal as, as the lake there. So it's a mountain lake kind of a scene. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. There we go. There's another mountain scene. And that's kind of what inspired this one behind me. It, uh, I love the aspect of cutting out a big tree and then having the depth of it. So it's got two layers of mountains. It's got metal on the back and also the tree. Thank you for coming to my stream. Well, thank you for coming to my stream. Everybody check out BRD Designs on Facebook, BRD under slash designs on Instagram. I want to thank everybody behind the scenes that's made this happen. Without you, it's not even possible. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in. And remember, spread that love. Find, find your passion. Reimagine yourself. I'll talk to you later.
Here we are. Welcome to Under the, a Pepper Tree. This is a poetry and prose and musical experience. This is an open mic uh, we created under a pepper tree to create community um, in with artists around our community. So we're going to have a number of our um, artists read tonight, today, and um, we have a lineup of about 11 people. Kirsten, I'm Audrey Stimson, by the way, and my partner is Kirsten Zill. Kirsten? Okay, I'm Kirsten, and so we start our lineup today for this wonderful um, event that we're very happy that you're doing this and that we can be part of it. And to take us all into this open mic, um, please, Nayi, open it up. storm, to the spot where it really hurts, letting my bubble burst so I could fall out of the sky. I wall myself in, I hide behind my self-righteous anger. I suck at the blood from the scrapes on my knees, telling myself it will be okay as I crawl over the shards of my comfortable existence and back to sleep. The sirens wake me. The pool of the outrage sucks my awareness out of the slumber and onto the streets. Barely awake, I stumble through my emotions, tripping over my fear, tussling with my frustration, bumping into my disgust and pushing past my self-pity. I search for my shoes. The soles are broken and worn from the miles I've walked. Past the bones of the ancestors of our first peoples, past the cages of the stolen ones, past the ruined cities and past the cardboard shelters of the forgotten, past the police tape, past the empty bump stocks and the gurneys, past the gates of the castles that remain shut, past the armed sentinels with shields on their breasts, past all the signs that told me something ain't right, I lean over, bending down low to tie my laces and pull up my socks. I cover myself with determination and a mask that protects me. I pick up a sword. I lift my wrath out from my heart and over my head. I stand ready to burn and tear down everything that 
that is holding me captive. I pull on my t-shirt with a slogan that screams as loud as my pounding heart. I open the door, I stammer, I yell, I howl, I wait, and I listen. I taste the very tea I past. I swallow, I hesitate, I feel hope slip out of me and fall to the ground. I pick it up, I breathe, I can breathe. I step, I cross the threshold out of myself and into action. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you. And next up is Makila. Hi, everybody. My name is Makila. I am from Makila Tango, Make LA Tango in Culver City. So this is a poem also, and it's called Over There. The yellow rainy boots and the blue and white Adidas, the thin legs and the polo shirt, the dark skin, the deep wrinkles, the huge smile, the contagious laugh, that was my dad. The dark hair, snow white, ideas, poems, books, reviews, a prolific misunderstood artist, a broken body in a magnificent soul, that was my sister. Polka dots on a white skirt, huge gold earrings robbed on the street, 50 gold bracelets stolen by the caregiver, a gold wedding ring, huge brown eyes with long eyelashes, a beauty spot next to her full lips. That was my grandma. Light brown guayabera shirts, piano practices every day, a cigarette on his hand, an intellectual quote, a concertist. That was my grandfather. Death on the hands of institutionalized racism. In this world, when we are everything and nothing, I found myself honoring our people who transitioned. Too many people, too much pain, too much injustice. Whatever I'm doing is not enough. My life is beating a sick heart. A tree loses its leaves and I'm a witness. A shadow of a butterfly circumnavigating around me, reimagining myself not here but there. Might be better, less painful, more company. I can sing and dance without being sanctioned. I can love, be loved, and hide with no norms. Maybe over there is easier than here. Thank you. Thank you, Makila. Awesome. Yali. Okay. <clears throat> reimagine. I was asked to reimagine 2020. And as I sat at my desk, I realized I don't want to. I don't want to reduce this monumental year. While so many suffer out there, I won't imagine a peaceful scene right here. The year 2020 shoulders the weight of centuries of racism, fear, and hate. I will not minimize the magnitude of this struggle, nor the pressure to reform this unjust state. I will not gloss over this moment with a paintbrush of expediency. No, I do not care to reimagine 2020. It's wrong to hold on only for the point to tip again. I don't want to wait for yet another time when change is forced. Today I'm voting with my neighbors, all of us who believe in equality and accord. And when I do decide to imagine, it will be for 2021. My child, you ask, then what's worth imagining? I cry, a revolution. Public servants returning from beyond the pale. I'll imagine demands are heard and enacted, and tolerance planted forever in an absolute acceptance rooted that we are all one, yet not all the same. And we will hold hard those desires together for unity, not 
domination, dominion, code, or gain. And when the dust settles and the smoke dissolves, I want to imagine a resolution that will rise in immensity for 2021 to encompass us all as we sail windward through and onward beyond 2020's shattered veil. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Ooh, okay. Um, it's a shame that we rushed through this. <laughs> it's all like, ah, we need some more time to let it set in. But okay, next up, Robert. He's still muted. Should I unmute you, Robert? Um, for some reason, it doesn't so okay. Okay, no? Yeah, there. There you go. So what I said was, it's always good to follow golly. So here we go. Sometimes the blues. Sometimes the blues is all there is. Black blues, brown blues, White girl mojoing some down home way of whispering to your heart. That old suitcase of despair. Your finger tap tapping on your knee at the bus terminal. Public in a way all identity is stripped. Your lips now willing to let it pass. Sometimes the blues is your head in your hands. Elbows on your thighs. The lies of nothing going nowhere. Silence moves, disconnected thoughts, the clock ticks, all the poetry's lost. Sometimes the blues is the death of a child. Grief runs wild. Why, why, child? The blues is forever. The heart breaks. Never again takes its place. Sometimes the blues is me, I'm alone. Sometimes the blues is we, you're at home. Time and space estrangements, custody arrangements, always saying you did what? Sometimes the blues is what is not. When the blues becomes what, you've got nothing left to lose. And the blues becomes the news, and the news runs through you. Out on the dance floor, the rhythms of living are in pelvic thrust. Electric air, hair flies, women slung low. The sub bass beats the underside of audio. Big mirrored balls shattered length, fractured rays. Men pump, arms raised, praise to the scatter of light. The shatter, the right, the glory of horns. A sax blows low alto. Boos and oohs, the secretory miracles of women. The cocks slide side to side. The flat of my palms guide her hips, pursed lips, hands, fan. The spirit is among us. We're anemones in the current. Bravo, Robert. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Carol. Yeah. Hi, Carol. Good to see you. Good to see you, Carol. So I'm going to do um, a song that I did not write. Um, Richie Havens wrote it. And <clears throat> first time I ever heard it, uh, it's on the Grace of the Sun CD, which came out in 2004, and um, it just knocked me out, and I want to do it for you now. It's called Pulling Up the Stone.
Ach ja. Carmen. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope that we are all doing as best as we can to deal with these waves of change because they are coming rapidly. They are coming from stacks. They are coming from sets. They are coming in deep, 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 deep crevices that we have been needing to clear and see. So um, thank you for inviting me here to your space and sharing space. Um, this one's called I'm Tired. <laughs> Back and forth, I'm tired. Pulling in and out of my soul, I'm tired. The terror and worry of today is dead and torn, I'm tired. For their colors were too dark for blue and all of demons, I'm fucking tired. Come to the places of darkness only whites know, and it's created evil, I'm tired. Bold lines drawn, captured, to have us trapped, back to set us back, wet and snatched with babies on our backs where papers lay. I'm wet and I'm tired, illegal, stolen, vocabulary that isn't mine unfolding, nothing but cold stares and anti-black rhetoric from the pale-faced allied slave friends. I'm tired, my homosexual tendencies drenched in holy waters. I'm tired, by my mother, still under the spell of those who know how to frighten her. I'm tired. Regardless, it comes from a place of love to not have my soul burn farther because I'm tired. Down into the alleys of hell where my papers don't matter from a $20 lollipop, I'm getting the short end of that deal because I'm tired. Toe to toe with the space in sight, the Treaty of Hidalgo still haunts me at night. Why does the pen have so much power? Damn, all this inherited sin that isn't mine put on me it makes me want to vomit and never take, never take another step towards the future because I'm tired. What if those papers burned and none of them matter? Can we imagine a place full of peace or will the world continue to be shattered? Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Carmen. Shishi. Oh, 
Hi, I'm Genevieve with Westside Food Bank. We are delighted to be part of the Reimagine Music and Arts Festival. To all the artists and musicians, congratulations, and thank you for supporting Westside Food Bank. To find out more about our COVID-19 response, visit wsfb.org, where you can also make a donation. Every dollar provides food for four nutritious meals for so many more people who now need our help. Thanks so much for your support and enjoy the festival. Can you hear? I hear nothing. Oh, okay. Can you guys hear me now? <laughs> yeah. All set. Okay. Hi, guys. I'm Lizzie with Urban Bloom. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a terrarium with objects that you can find around your house. We can't really shop right now, so I wanted to do something that would be easy. Um, so here's what you need. To begin, you need a glass vessel, some sort, okay? And we'll go over different types. You can grab something like that, a wine glass, an empty tequila bottle, anything, anything like that. Most of us have mason jars, so I'll show you how to do that today. Tools you will need, okay, scissors chopsticks or little sticks, something where you can push things down, and an old toothbrush. Then you'll need to go outside and get some dirt, okay? Most of us have dirt in our yards, or we can ask our neighbor for some dirt, get to know your neighbor better. In order for a terrarium to look great, you need three different layers. You need dirt, but you also need rocks, so I have little rocks like this, anything that you can find, um, you can go on a walk, look around, look down on the ground, there are rocks, collect them, and that will help your terrarium look better. The last little element you need is sand. This is white sand, 
looks great. Um, some of us don't have sand. You can go to the beach, get that sand, put it on a cookie sheet, let it dry out. There are little bugs sometimes. Um, I have lots of different types of sand that are colored that will make your terrarium look better, make it stand out. But if you don't have that, what you can do is take a little plastic baggie, take your sand, get some food coloring. This is neon. Add two little drips. Doop, doop. And squish it together and it'll look like this. So you can color your sand to make your terrarium look more interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, after that, go out in your yard and look for some plants. Succulents. <clears throat> I went outside this morning and I collected these. Okay. So the roots are still intact. I took the soil, kind of took the soil off and I took scissors and cut the roots. This little guy still has some of the soil attached. That's perfect. Succulents don't really need a lot of roots, so if you cut them all the way off, that's totally fine. I have cactus growing outside, no roots. These will be perfect. Okay, so it's pretty much all you need. Okay, I'm gonna start off by teaching you how to make a large terrarium. So this is the vessel I'm gonna use. When we're finished, it should look like this. So we have lots of layers, pink rocks, white rocks, sand, soil, and then it's hard to see, but there's the little succulents. I'm gonna hand this off to Mana White and he's gonna show you. <laughs> okay, so that's what it's gonna look like at the end. Thank you. Okay, first you're gonna get your soil. You're gonna to wanna to put it closer to the center. And you're gonna put your rocks and your sand off to the sides where you can really see it. Now you're gonna to wanna to fill it about halfway. So this part's pretty fun. A lot of people worry they're gonna mess up. You really can't. Okay, so this is how much soil I'm starting off with. Okay, next I'm gonna find some rocks. So I think I'll start off with these. Rocks help with drainage. Your plant will last longer if it, the roots do not get too soggy. So rocks help with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour some to the side. Turn it. It's important to look at your terrarium from all angles. Because if you only work on one side at the end, it won't look too great. Okay, so here's what it looks like so far. I'm gonna spread some of the soil to the side, spread it out here. Now I'm gonna pick some sand. I love turquoise, so I'm gonna work with that color. Again, use what you have. If you don't have any sand, you could go to the beach, look for some shells, that would work, and collect a bunch of shells. Okay, so here I'm gonna put some blue on the side, turn it a little bit more, turn it. It's starting to come together. See, it looks kind of interesting. You don't wanna go in straight lines, it will look boring. Okay, so I think I will add a few other rocks. Mm -hmm. you want to build up shake it in the center I have the soil that's where I'm going to put most of the plants so now because of the size of the vessel I know I can fit more than one plant when you're when you're designing plants you want to think of odd numbers one three five that's what you want to stick with so for this size I'll probably go with three plants if I go with two or four it doesn't look interesting so for the sake of time, I picked out three plants ahead of time. This little guy, <clears throat> I'm gonna take my scissors, chop, chop, chop a little bit of that off. Then I'm gonna take my chopstick, 
make a little hole. And then with a the twisting motion, I'm gonna put it in and twist. Now I'll take my chopstick and I'll try to hide the roots. Okay. Looking good. Okay, next, next plant. So I have these two left. I'll keep them close together, remembering that the soil is in the center. Take my chopstick, make a little hole, push and twist. You want to be gentle. Try not to hurt your little plant. If you do, don't worry about it because they're survivors. They're easy going. And yes, you can kill succulents. I've killed several. But it's okay. All right, next, I have two plants. One more will look better. So I'm gonna put it right here. So they're making a triangle. And again, I keep turning it and looking from the side to make sure it looks balanced. So dig a little hole, twist. Okay, voila. Now, in order for it to be more stable, I'll add a few extra rocks and I push down. You wanna push down towards the center of the succulent so you can kind of get its roots stuck. I'm basically done. That's it. Now, I happen to have a few objects that I found over the years that are cool. I have some cool little rocks. Usually when I go out of town, I take a rock from wherever I went, bring it home, I have a jar. So adding like a little piece of glass or a cool little rock right here. This is from some event that I went to, it's a little fox. I'm gonna put him in here. Kids, if you're doing this, I work with kids and it's definitely more interesting when they can put a little toy in there. So if you're working with your child, that's something that's kind of fun. And that's about it. Okay, so caring for this. You wanna water it <clears throat> every other week and you can take a spoonful of water and you mm -hmm. just wanna water the plant or you can just spray it. Don't spray the rocks, just spray the plant. Um, the biggest mistake is people overwater and then the plants rot. So put it in a place in your house. It doesn't need a lot of light. Less light is better. Thank you. And there you go. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Mana White. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thanks. All right. So I was looking around the house this morning and I found a candle. I took the wax out of the candle and I use this. I could use a drinking glass as well. This is a great use for a margarita glass. I did the same procedure, soil in the center. I used white sand, one succulent. Now remember the rule, one, three, or five. And then a the little guy right in here. Make it more interesting. Okay. Okay. So if you don't have any soil, what you could do is take a wine glass, take some water, fill it about a quarter ways up, and then go outside and pick a flower or a succulent. This succulent was blooming. I thought it looked interesting. So I cut that. Then I happen to have some marbles things like that, drop them at the bottom of the glass. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry guys. And then put your flower in the center. And voila, simple, it's pretty. It's most of these objects I just, you'll have lying around your house, easy. It's not a terrarium, but it's close. Okay, let's see what other one was I gonna make. Okay, thank you. Okay, how much time do we have? 
Oh, three minutes. Okay. Well, right. I give you about two minutes. Okay. Right now, um, the succulents are blooming. So one thing you can do is cut these off, cut the blooms off and use them, put them in water. Um, most of us, again, have mason jars. So now I'm going to show you how to make a terrarium with a mason jar. It's a little harder because it's hard to get your hand down there. But again, you want to go up halfway with your rocks, soil, and sand. And then for something this size, I would use three small succulents or one. So we have a little bit more time, so I'll go ahead and start that. I'll put soil at the bottom. A little bit of glass. If you have any of that lying around. And then just layer up. Where okay. Are places to get all this? Um, there are art supply stores and teacher supply stores, Michaels, um, but basically any kind of art store will have most of these supplies. Grocery stores these days, um, you can get lots of plants at Vaughn's, at Trader Joe's, um, and the supplies that you need at art supply stores. Okay, so I'm just going to keep building from here and do another layer. Take some more soil. Again, remember, try not to make straight lines. If you end up with straight lines, the little trick that you can use is you take your spoon and you just push and you can create more movement this way. It's more visually interesting. Okay, let me see, the timer is up. Okay, I'll put some more sand. If you want, you can use lots of different colors. I recommend, again, using, if you're gonna use colors, maybe one to two colors at the most, and then everything else is neutral. Okay, put some more glass. More soil. And this mason jar I found outside. I was on a walk during these wonderful times and I found this in the alley. It is a basic mason jar, but it's a little more interesting. And I washed it a few times and now I'm filling it. So I have three succulents here. We're almost out of time. But what I would do is these are right from my garden. Put three together, make sure they look nice. Practice putting them together first. See if you like it. If you don't, maybe one's too big, one's too small and then just place them inside. Simple. I did 13 minutes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Now this one's a little too long, so I'm gonna cut it. Again, they don't really need a root system. They're gonna survive. And then this one, the root ball is too big, so I'm just gonna use my fingers, get some of the soil off, take some, some of the dead leaves off, leaves off. There's a little baby. I'll save that for later. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So this is, ooh. Now what I usually do is I look, I finish, I walk away and I come back and I look at it. This one's looking a little crowded, but it's cute. Thank you. Okay. Um, here's a small uh, Patron bottle. I didn't use any soil. Um, I just used rocks and sand. And I used an air plant and a succulent and a bloom. That will last about three to four months. I'll just spray it every other week. These make great gifts too. All right, thank you so much everybody. Okay, take care, bye. <laughs> Have fun. <coughs>
2014, I was working in a youth and family center. First, I needed to work with them in a therapeutic way, talking, but then I realized that they, they were telling me a story, narrating the things that happened to them. I felt that we couldn't go, go more profound, so I, I started inviting them to practice yoga instead. They started to report dreams and images. I thought this is a great uh, opportunity. I don't think I'm doing anything new. Uh, dreams have been seen as a mystery for many, many people. But I, I think we all have a tendency of not paying attention to them. We have this amazing gift and then we forget about it or we, we dismiss it. If we create a space where these dreams can be, can be kind of incubated and paid attention, that's when we start seeing how important these, these images are. When Mercedes and I met at the Pico Youth and Family Center, I think I came to a, a dream lab and then she had offered to um, generously to include me to teach yoga as the first part of her dream lab. It, it's a perfect little union of um, healing through creativity and movement. And at that point, I feel like talk therapy could actually be way more valuable because you have such a different and more deep perspective of what's going on. The opportunity I'm trying to give people is reestablishing their connection to their bodies and feeling empowered in their own bodies. Regardless of any weird sensation that might happen or feeling that might come up, that all of it is relevant and normal and can be healed with movement and breath and creativity. In these times of anxiety and uncertainty, it is extremely important that we stay connected to our community. We must remain devoted to nurturing one another and continue to have access to resources that allow us to feel supported, establish balance, and remain grounded. We also must continue to live our best quality of life, which means making space for creativity and play. I found myself quarantined in Los Angeles, which is not my usual home. Mercedes Gertz very generously invited me to participate in the project. She co-leads with Stacy Tenbuten. Twice a week, we meet virtually. Stacy leads us through a heart opening yoga class, after which we sketch or write something that came up in our dreams and our yoga practice. Mercedes then guides us through showing and talking about our images and our thoughts. The weekly meetings offer us the chance to connect to a group of women in a judgment-free space where our ideas and our voices are shared. I am excited every time we meet to discover how my creativity will blossom that day. Moving in connection to our breath during yoga helps to open us to our dreams and thoughts and gives us a chance to delve deeper into our feelings. One unexpected surprise has been how often there is a recurring theme in different persons' drawings. It is as if a creative collective consciousness is at play. Thank you, Mercedes and Stacy, for the chance to peek inside myself at this time where so many things outside are out of our control and uncertain. It has been a wonderful chance to give special meaning to this very peculiar time. In the Dream Lab, we explore our dreams and inner thoughts to discover their true meaning. At first, I couldn't uh, see the connection between my random thoughts and ideas. I have learned that everything, even a dream or a thought, happens for a reason and that everything has a meaning, even our dreams. The Dream Lab is helping me to realize the connection between all my random dreams and thoughts and also to understand the conversation between them that is taking place inside my brain. The yoga and dream lab classes are the perfect way to combine an excellent physical workout with a great emotional adventure and I couldn't be happier 
to be a part of this class. The practice of yoga has always given me a lot of benefits, like improving my posture, getting strength and flexibility while calming my mind and thoughts. This particular practice of yoga and dream lab has been a little different. Maybe because it started during this weirdest times and in post-isolation and the way that the practice flows guided by Stacy helps me to quiet the mind, to be present at all times and it stimulates the imaginary. So in every posture and breathe in and out, I feel more connected to my body and to the ground. And sometimes an image or a color might come or not. After the practice, we transition to our notebooks to draw. And this part is guided by Mercedes. She invites us to share with the group the drawings and dreams. And it is very interesting to see others in the screen share their dreams, thoughts, and drawings. Even though we are apart, I feel connected through the whole experience, and I feel safe to say whatever comes to my mind. Multiple people come up with the same symbol, like a spiral, and roots, and a heart, fire. And for me, is the power of the present, and the coincidence comes because we have created a community connected in some way and stimulated by this powerful practice. I'm Carmen and I've been practicing yoga with the Yoga Dream Lab for a few weeks already and I was very attracted at the beginning to the fact that you know I love yoga I, and, and I dream a lot and I'm always curious about what my dreams mean and then uh, but drawing wasn't something that I was very uh, attracted to. I was, I was kind of reluctant about the, the three things together. And I never thought that this could have such a therapeutic of effect on me. Um, I'm a very reserved person um, and I don't usually talk about my personal life or what worries me uh, to other people. So um, the Dream Yoga Lab taught me to be more open and to listen to people talk and have an opinion about my dreams. Um, also taught me to speak about my emotions, my feelings, and not being afraid of being judged. Because what I learned is that when you share something with your community, and this is already a healing process and, and I found that this beautiful community of women that we have created weren't there to judge me, just to give and receive and to support each other. I've learned to express myself through images, colors or just a word and by, by practicing this weekly um, not only became easier and, and more enjoyable, but also I realized that um, when I had to go back to that feeling, or to that emotion, I didn't feel that I was confronting myself and needed to have a, a solution or, or, or closing for that uh, thought that it was in my mind. It was just uh, like, it was more like talking to myself in a different language, in a very kind one. And uh, I could go back to that feeling and to, to work on it without feeling a pinch in my stomach, which is something that I used to do most of the time. And I'm not only feeling connected to a community, I'm more connected to myself. And I tend to have this association of feelings and emotions to images, even in my everyday life. And it helps me to, to process those uh, emotions uh, in a softer way. When I began this workshop, I thought about these meetings as a place to connect my body to my psyche, something I hadn't really done since I was a child. 
However, what I discovered is that this practice is much more important. With the guidance of Stacy's calm, soothing voice and guidance into the postures and flow, along with Mercedes honoring and amplification of the material that emerges from the unconscious, I am connected to a powerful feminine energy that both strengthens and heals, keeping me from sliding into a state of fracture and depression. These two precious women guide our group into a containment where for me, I feel safe to be vulnerable, explore through drawing, and even share my images. These images are important for me right now. They offer a space for me to continue to ground long after the yoga portion of the workshop is completed. Create a space where, where dream, these dreams can become a, a potential fairy tale or a potential painting or a poem because once we transform something that gave us anguish or 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 as as we know dreams can be very strange and they can can come attached to a lot of very controversial feelings that is what happens in the in the workshop you never know who's going to be the teacher because whoever is going to bring the, this image and transform it is the one that is going to teach everybody. So th that's, that is why it's not a workshop. That is why we decided to call it laboratory, because it's, it's where these images actually take place and they get into, into matter. Yoga and Dream Lab is for anybody that has a body and has a dream, any kind of body or any kind of dream. Um, I would say that the greatest myth about yoga and art is um, that you have to be flexible to do yoga, that you have to be able to put your feet behind your, your head. As long as you can breathe your body and even move one finger and integrate those two things together, you're a master yogi. As long as you can be um, brave enough to draw a line on a piece of paper, that's art, one line. And when we're doing yoga in Dream Lab, we're sitting with these things with thoughtfulness and with importance and with self-respect and self-care. And things grow. A practice grows, your art grows, everything kind of blooms from this incubated space. And we're all in it together. If you have a pen and a paper, you can come to Yoga and Dream Lab. So you can draw your, your dream after an amazing practice. Join us Tuesday mornings at 9.30 a.m. to Yoga Dream Lab, sponsored by Spark.
Right here in our community, people are struggling to keep enough food on their tables. Families with children, seniors, veterans, college students, and people experiencing homelessness now need our help. You can help Westside Food Bank provide food to everyone in our area who needs help by visiting WSFB.org and making a donation. Every dollar provides four nutritious meals for our neighbors in need. Thank you for your support, and please be well. Okay, that's good. I'm turning off your sound. Welcome. My name's Carol. This is my friend Trina. And we are here today to do a little art therapy workshop with you. Um, this is a workshop that Trina and I have done before. It is a workshop based on the uh, workshops presented by A Window Between Worlds, which is quite a wonderful organization that does art therapy with uh, people who have survived trauma. And it seems to me that today we're all experiencing a certain degree of trauma to one degree or another, given all of the world catastrophes that are going on. And so we thought that we would share something with you about that. Um, and it's a project that we call Stepping Stones. Um, we will be showing you what, what materials we use to make our Stepping Stones and uh, also allowing for the fact that you might not have access to all the materials that we have handy right now, how you might be able to use, do this using any old materials. So this really embodies the idea of moving through life and there are sometimes things that you want to get rid of and some things that you might want to aspire to in the future. And so this workshop involves making two stones and stepping from one stone to the next. And one of the stones is symbolic of something that you want to get rid of. And the other stone is symbolic of something that you want to aspire to. So, um, Trina is my, is my Vanna today. <laughs> so she can, she can get closer to the screen than I can. So she's going to show you first just what we use for the first stone. And we like the idea of actually using an actual stone. But and you can use anything that you have, any type of rock, piece of wood, anything. So what we do is we take that stone and we use a, a metallic Sharpie pen. And we write a word on it of something that we want to get rid of. So Trina's showing mine. I have I have chosen judgment as something that I am endeavoring to rid myself of. I don't know that it's entirely possible to rid oneself of all judgment, but um, for me, judgment is is something that is often used to hurt people. And I'm a firm believer that I don't 
want to be somebody who hurts someone else. And so that's something that is an aspiration for me. And so that's what I wrote on my stone. It's a little hard to see because it's, a, you know, it's a silver Sharpie on a gray stone. So if you can't actually read it, that's why I'm telling you what it says. Okay. So that's that, that's that stone. Then for the next piece, we have always enjoyed using these glass pebble stones, which you can, you can buy at Michael's. They're, they're pretty simple. They're, they're small, they're inch and a half, two inches in diameter, and they're flat on one side and domed on the other side. And they're just a piece of glass. And then we use a little piece of paper, a little circle paper that um, is just a little piece of paper. And then we have all kinds of, of drawing equipment. We, I used crayons today because why not? I happen to have a new set of crayons that had all those nice sharp points on them. Or you can use pens or markers or watercolors or anything else that suits your fancy. And then you want to draw something on your little circle of paper that is your aspiration, that thing which you are you are planning to to look to in your future. And I I have chosen hope as what I want my aspiration to be. And you can write that word on that piece of paper and then you can decorate it in any way that you see fit and when you're done with your little tiny circular piece of art you then can take any kind of glue that dries clear you can just use a glue stick or white glue or whatever that dries clear and then you glue it to the flat side of the glass pebble and then it makes a very nice frame for your little piece of artwork. So Trina's showing our finished product there. So then you, you now have your two stones or two pieces of wood or a shell, whatever, whatever, whatever you've, whatever you come across, it doesn't have to be stones, but like I say, we, we kind of like the symbolism of those. And so what we encourage people to do is to take that rock of the thing that you're wanting to get rid of and um, maybe go bury it in your garden or throw it into the ocean. Um, don't commit any criminal acts using this rock. Um, but it's not something that you need to be reminded of. It's something you want to get rid of. And then with, with your bright and shiny rock, your, your hope for the future, that can be like a talisman or, or a fetish or whatever, a, a, a worry bead. It's something that you can keep with you or you can leave it on your desk or you can keep it in your pocket or you can leave it at the bottom of your purse or whatever, wherever you want to keep it that will allow you to have that reminder of what you're aspiring to. So that's, that's our, that's our stepping stone exercise. And I would encourage you to take that idea and do with it what you will. But I hope that by, by using art, it, I think that we live in a culture that is very, very left brained. We are very focused on, on words and stuff. And by, by getting into a little, art and symbolism that it engages the right brain and and helps us maybe gain a little different perspective on how we're viewing ourselves in the world today. 
So that's all we've got. And I thank you for joining us today. Hi everybody, are we six feet away? I think we are, we're good. All right, so everybody, I hope you've been social distancing and putting your masks on. There are a lot of great artists that are doing masks now, so look out for those. Um, two years ago, we did the first Legendary Women Artists of Venice Awards with Lauren Doyle, and we did it at the Irwin Hotel in a tiny little Red Bull room. We were not social distancing, we were not afraid. But this year, we just had to do the Legendary Women Artists of Venice Awards again because Harry, they are making art even in this pandemic and they deserve to be honored. Our first honoree is Robin Murez. Studio Dog, welcoming you. I have my current project, I'm building the Venice Flying Carousel. And um, so this is my studio where I'm carving all the animals. Um, they each bring out stories of the history of Venice. And the carousel itself will be bicycle propelled. One kid can pedal a bike and 15 adults and kids can ride at a time. And it's just kind of a little bit bigger, no tech kinetic sculpture that brings out the stories of Venice as I've been doing over the past number of years. I've got sculptures up and down Abbot Kinney that do that too in different ways and along Venice Boulevard and Main Street. Um, so here we are, what can I tell you? Um, this will be a uh, People oftentimes ask when it will be done, and so it'll be done when I'm done. Um, but I'm hoping maybe like a year and a half, um, slowed down a little bit by the COVID. Oh, but something kind of interesting. So each of the animals is um, sponsored by a family or, or business in Venice. And L'Escargot, the snail, was the choice of um, Joël Dumas, who actually was honored rightfully so as a legendary artist of Venice. Oh, and see my t-shirt? <laughs> In honor of the award, thank you. Our second honoree is M.B. Bosana. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, come on in. Hi. <laughs> well, this is good. This will be the last studio visit that ever happens in here. The last serious piece I did was like kind of hearkening back to my um, original artwork, which was much more um, militaristic and kind of um, kind of a little more graphic, a little more hard edge. But I wanted to do like a hard edge piece that that had the military aspect to it, but that felt also very soft and kind of fuzzy. How, how has the pandemic changed your work or your outlook on your work or, or just your process? Well, I don't have a process because I'm not working. Um, I feel very much like being obsessed with painting every day for all these years. I feel this very strange like pullback from 
the necessity of making art. I don't feel like it's super necessary right now to make paintings. It doesn't really line up with, um, you know, the pandemic, the feel of what's going on in the world, what's going on in our neighborhood. I feel like there's better work to be done outside of my studio right now. And um, I'm very interested in that. And whether it's political, whether it's, whether, I mean, I'm looking at a lot of different things, um, but I definitely want to do more community driven work than ego driven work, which is, which is uh, painting for me right now. Thanks, MB. And now we're going to hear from artist and board member, Sandra Zebi, who designed this year's award. Take it away, Sandra. Hi, everybody. My name is Sandra Zebi, and I want to introduce the trophies for the legendary women of Venice. The idea is started with my vases. They are the shape of a woman. This is the Watermelon Sisters. That's one of my original watermelon lady. And this is my latest design. So based on the women's silhouettes, I came up with the trophy shape. So the trophy goes to Robin Mirrors. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you for the award. I hope that it benefits the carousel because it's a project that I welcome everybody's involvement in. Um, congratulations, MV. MV, thank you. Thank you so much. This is beautiful. I thank you, Sunny, and thank you, Venice Art Crawl. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me, especially given the times that we're in and everything that's going on and um, how much we need to appreciate our, our creative class in this, in this city in particular, in this neighborhood in particular, and I'm proud to be the face of that. Thank you. Thanks, MB. And now we're gonna do a Zoom call with Ruth Chase. Congratulations, Ruth. that um hey, hey, hey welcome to my studio my name is Ruth Chase and I was born and raised in Venice and most people know me for the West of Lincoln project which I'm going to talk a little bit about today but first I really want to thank um uh thank everyone for voting for me for the uh, Venice Legendary Artist Award very huge for me having grown up in Venice and watching the art world um, for me to be part of this. I'd also like to thank, or not thank, but congratulate. There we go. I'd like to congratulate uh, Robin Mirez and MB Boisenault for also being part of this. So let's talk a little bit about the work, right? Um, I'm wearing my Venice Pride shirt today, um, and I think Echo in Venice uh, made this. Um, so let's cue up a slide. West of Lincoln Project um, was really a project that was uh, about the community. Um, it was for the community, and it it was a collaboration with the community. So. Um, I don't know if you have the West of Lincoln painting to show. You showed it in the beginning. Um, it also was part of 12 individual portraits. So there's one right here that's of Fernando Manzanilla, where I interviewed community members that grew up in Venice and listened to their stories. And then they led the work in something that I later called... Um, biographical portraiture. 
So um, biographical portraiture is really where the artist is working in service to the person that they are working with. So let me read you something um, that Fernanda wrote or uh, said in his interview. Some of you may know Fernando, and if you do, it would be great to hear you give a shout out. Um, now we're talking old school Venice, not that old school, but kind of like 80s. So this piece right here is called Not Just Me Anymore, and it's a collaboration with Fernando Manzanilla, who was born in 1966 and uh, grew up on Washington Way, down the street from me, actually. He says, if I could an alcohol, to follow a career, to go to college, to get an education, that is what I tell my kids now. I have two beautiful kids and they are my reason for being sober. It wasn't until I realized my behavior could take my kids away that I actually got sober. The stories have made a positive impact on my children, teaching them what drugs and unresolved anger will do. All the crap I put myself through became my best tools to help other addicts and um, alcoholics today. So that whole project was really about um, taking the local community and resourcing them as having value outside of being a doctor or a lawyer. A lot of the things that we usually look at when we're looking at value um, in, in people in the community, that um, a life with experience is a tremendous value to the community. So anyhow, the West of Lincoln, you could see the painting. This was the West of Lincoln painting. It's a different painting. Um, Rick Clayton, a local artist that I grew up around, um, we hung out during the punk rock days in Venice, um, did the script, which was the Venice letters. He sent, sent them in to me and then I uh, transcribed them on the painting. And this particular painting had about 70 entries with um, a lot of local people that you probably even know. Um, Francisco Letelier, who's a friend of mine from actually even uh, before he moved to Venice. And um, anyhow, everybody submitted a audio story. So this piece comes with uh, headphones and you can hear each person's story. Another slide that would be great to share it. Um, so the West of Lincoln project was also awarded a certificate of appreciation from the uh, city of Los Angeles for arts in action. And really that goes to the whole community um, that participated. It was like 300 people. Um, here's Fernando and you can see some of the symbolism in his work, in the work. Actually, I painted it, but we worked very closely together. Again, this biographical portraiture, it is literally led by the person you're serving. So I saw myself as serving Fernando's story and he, he led how it was, um, how it came out and everything was run by him. Um, all of these stories can be found on my website. And here we go, my new work. Anyhow, my website is ruthchase.com, but please, all these stories, there's, um, let me just give a shout out, Leonard Duran, Gloria Omar, Brad James, Meta Zimmerman, Linda, Rhonda Lynn Weiss, David Fowler, Eddie Havina, um, Solo Scott, Elaine Love Leslie, and also Jenna Lasco and Denise Woods were big on this. Um, you can hear all their stories on my website. And I encourage you, if you're new to Venice, learn a little bit about the history, become part of the fiber that literally made the place that you love so much. Um, I can't say enough that Venice was built on a lot of pain and suffering and also a lot of joy. And I think that it's it benefits people who uh, love Venice to uh, actually embrace all of that and have an understanding of why Venice is the way it is so that they can integrate with it. 
meet it where it's at. Anyhow, um, this is my new work. Uh, this piece is called, um, what is this piece called? It's called Repurposing Shame. And uh, on women, what it means to be a woman. A lot of uh, the work is channeled through my own identity and uh, gender issues, being a mother, um, watching my daughter grow up. And um, in this series, women have submitted their own stories and um, they're told um, through looking at other people's perspective on what it means to be a woman. So do we have another picture? And if you have any questions, please ask them in the YouTube uh, thing. I'll, I'll show up and answer them. This piece is called Finding Another Way. Um, there are three women who submitted images uh, to this piece, and it has to do with being a woman. And uh, God, can we relate to this in general um, lately? The struggles we have when we feel oppressed and the ways we find another way around the problem. Um, the woman on the right has a fence on her face and that fence is significant of both the border, um, the fence on the border, but also the fences that we have in our lives and the ways we have had to learn to work around systems. Um, and so uh, th that's this piece. Is there another slide? If there's not, I can find something else to talk about, let me tell you. Um, they were, oh, good. This is the piece I hoped would show. So this is Linda. Uh, sorry, I don't know why I'm calling you that. Uh, this is Rhonda Lynn Weiss, and her grandmother uh, was known as Mrs. Miss P, and she worked at the old police station. Um, Rhonda was part of the West of Lincoln. This is one of the individual portraits that she led. the Venice community housing and um, I'm not sure if it's still there or they they auctioned it off but um, many of you old schoolers uh, be, the generations before me might know Miss P um, and uh, Rhonda shares her stories about going to the beach and um, having picnics with her grandmother and as you can see in the back of the lens uh, that's her grandmother it's as a memory. And she also was very um, connected to theater and film. So she spent a lot of time at the Fox uh, theaters, uh, which, um, again, an old school thing. Um, another slide. Let's see if we've got another slide. All right. So... Um, Another pro, uh, piece that I did in the West of Lincoln, which ended up being a blank canvas. Good, there we go. Um, this piece was the 13th uh, portrait and it was in the art exhibit, which was at Venice Arts and it was blank. And I'll read what the tag said. The tag said, this canvas is to pay tribute to the history of the Oakwood district in Venice. African-American residents of Venice have made a valuable and important contribution to the development of Venice's unique cultural fabric and history. The West of Lincoln project is incomplete without this story being told, but it is not a story that can be told by me. It must come from the community itself. This blank canvas serves as a placeholder for an important an untold biography, and as an acknowledgement of the people who built their lives in what is now known as the Oakwood District. So um, that was probably my favorite piece. In and it was the best way I knew how to include it in the exhibition. So, um, I don't know if I, oh, there you go. This is at Venice Arts. It was one of the first exhibitions at their new space. 
And you can see the different uh, individual portraits that were there. And on the side was their biography. All of the biographies were handled by uh, Jen Alasco and um, I'm spacing Denise Woods. And uh, that happened because I was able to get a grant uh, uh, for an individual artist, which was really, really helpful. It didn't pay me, but it did help me provide some kind of um, support to the writers that helped with the project. Um, one of the things that I learned from this project truly was how communities are built, that communities are built on generations that keep creating change. And um, one of the things I observed is that when well-intending people move to a community, um, they often move there with great ideas about how to create a better space and are often very disconnected from the, the items, uh, the things that make that space unique and special. And so I really grew to have an appreciation that there's a history uh, in a place that you live and that when you're a newcomer, there's a way to integrate instead of separate. So with that, I am going to leave you. And um, you can find my work at ruthchase.com. I love you all. Be nice to each other. Um, remember that people are an asset and a resource to a community, the most valuable in my opinion. Oh, I'm gonna say, don't forget that, uh, who's up next? Who's up next? Patrick Marston and Michael Brunt, and please donate to the West Side Food Bank. I mean, this is a benefit for the West Side Food Bank. So Michael and uh, Patrick, I uh, love your work. I'm wearing my Venice Pride shirt. I can't wait to watch you. And I'm going to kick back and watch you as soon as I sign off on this. Much love, Venice. Take a break. Hi, oh. everybody. Boom. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, as you know, we told some people to have cocktails when we start this thing. I started a little early. Not that early, but yeah. Okay. yeah. Here we go. So we are excited. Cheers. Cheers, cheers to you. Cheers. Hello, hello. Cheers to you. Cheers to the Venice Art Crawl. Venice Art Crawl. Uh, I think they're in 10 years now. The whole team, David, Holly, Kelly, so many people. Oof. We don't want to leave anyone out. And cheers to you guys. So cheers. Sip. Sip. Cheers yes, to you. Sip. Hi. Okay. Yes, yeah. Mm. Mm. So delicious. We have notes because we want to do this right. I'm going to be like Kathy Lee and you be Hoda. I'm definitely the Hoda. Okay. That's awesome. So we're here. Welcome. Venice Crawl reimagined music and art event. Basically reimagine because it's online. Okay. I feel like I'm like in Disney. That's funny, right? Reimagine. Okay, so um, we're thrilled to be here. We did this once before. And, and we want to thank also Derek so much. So everything's going great. So what we want to say is we really appreciate watching Ruth. That was really great. We, we enjoy your art and love um, we love just how you were able to express and explain and that. Thank you for capturing Venice history through your art. Yeah, it's always that way. Look, by the way, Tanqueray is saying hi. Wait, I think my drink's in front of Tanqueray. <laughs> Say hi. Boom. Hi, boo. Yeah, hi, right, hi. Well, I have candy, but he can't have it. This one's for Patrick. Okay, there you go. Which they also call me candy. So we want to thank uh, the West Side Food Bank for helping. And... We wanted to read just a few things about them. You know, this year, due to COVID, the West Side Food Bank's food will reach twice as many people as usual, and their nutritious food will go over to 200,000 local people. 
and um, they help in the neighborhoods and free pantries and they give food. They have 55 agencies and food assistance programs and in the whole West Los Angeles area. And so they're really great to look into and the West Side Food Bank, find them, please. Yeah, please. How are you doing? I'm doing good, you know. I'm like an onion right now. Yeah, you're I mean, crying all the time. Well, there's just, with everything going on, there's a lot of layers, you know what I'm saying? Okay, there are. There's a lot of things going on. And so with COVID, we want to just say that we know people who have gotten a little bit ill. We don't know anybody who passed away, but people have. Thank so God. we're sending our heart to people. This is a real time and unique for all of us. And, you know, we just feel that. And we also want to say... Um, you know, regarding the protest, and we're going to actually read it. And so, Patrick, do you just want to be do that? succinct? Yeah. You know, during this time, the goal is to become better allies. People are listening and participating. It's amazing. Love it. The real test, though, is when someone will be alone. Right. And witness something unfair and uneven and will now be inspired to speak up when you hear something and speak up when you see something. That's right. It's because we have to speak to the people who are trying to whisper around you. When people whisper, say, I don't do that. You all know me. I don't take it from nobody. Don't take it from anybody. Speak up for everyone. You can't change all minds. Nope. But you can bring others closer. That's right. So we're building allies. And so we want to say that We've been working on a vertical garden wall Whew. and it's been great. And people are texting us. We should look. Oh, hi, Valerie. Hey. Hi, Holly. Um, What's hi, up? F. Okay, and Todd and my sister, Lori, of course, and my mom and your parents. Um, oh, hi, Jim. Hi. Peter I think they're going to try to cut us off with time, but they're not going to. <laughs> so, so what we're going to do is move on. We've been doing a vertical garden wall. Tell them where. Uh, up in the Hollywood Hills. Boom, this thing is beautiful. It's so great. And so you guys know that we have a new show coming on YouTube. It's Patrick and Michael's Fantastical Adventures in Art. But, uh, so we're looking forward to doing this with you. And I want you to know that uh, we're going to be showing some images now. Derek, who is like amazing handling Derek. all this uh, video montage and technical words, which I feel strong to you. I start technical words. <laughs> okay, ready? So can we see our first images? We're not sure exactly how it's going to happen. Is that okay? Hi. I feel, oh, Kathy Lee, take your pen. Do something important. Watch. Done with that second cocktail. Wasn't she married to a football player or something? Can you believe the NFL? Cheers. Oh, to the just NFL. Leave it yeah, cheers. Yeah, just, just leave um, it alone, Michael. Because we can't go too deep. we got to do this show and we're happy with art, but... We love people, and we're in it. Mm. So, Lifeguard Tower. Hi. Yes. Hi. Hi, Dana Bouton and Don Cameron. Oh, my God. Or Donna Ca Dana Cameron. So, I don't know if you know, but we oh. know that we did... Uh, the Rainbow Lifeguard the Tower. The Rainbow Lifeguard Tower. We were part of Venice Pride, a board of directors, and Sunny Back, who is the head of um, uh, uh, Venice Art Crawl, is also... Uh, was a partner in that with us too and uh, many others and hi Heath I know you're so, watching along with the great team and George Francisco and Grant Turk the Venice lifeguard tower was actually uh, imagined and produced and we are so we're so proud to be a part of that we're so grateful and uh, I don't know if you've seen it or not but you should definitely take a jog down there and get your picture taken by it it's uh, you can't take a bad picture there when this is over <laughs> all of it and the hornets, the large hornets. We want you all to know that we're all going to go back there and we're going to clean it up, do some line work, and let's have a big party by it. So That's go right. on to the next image. And this picture, uh, Patrick, let's talk about... Well, we're... so you may all... I think we have to go a little faster. You, you all may know me from... Uh, I used to be in Neptina, which is a wonderful store that sold uh, great vintage glass, as well as paintings. Uh, uh, Abbott Kenny, let me get my artists. dog. And uh, uh, I, that was kind of my introduction to Venice as uh, an artist that um, focused on goldfish and a goldfish as my Buddhas, as as my mantras. Uh, you know, goldfish live in the present. They uh, fish represent spirit. Um, I love their weightlessness, their loftiness. 
and the colors uh, I feel uh, make people happy. So this was something I wanted to dedicate some time to, and you may know me for that, I'm not sure, but um, I've done a lot of goldfish. A lot of beautiful fish. I'll raise your hand out there if you have one, so it's really fun. <laughs> um, so we, the next image. Thanks, Derek. So uh, this is funny because this is where we've gone. We've been doing this for a long time. We have, and I and I love what you have taught me. Yeah. And that it's not about being an artist. Mm -hmm. Lesson. Yeah. It's about being in the business of art. Yes, artists, stop saying you're an artist. You have to be in the business of art. So we have product, and we've been building an art house that's artimprinted.com for two and a half years with. Devin Asher and the family. And these are people we know very well. You can see the products that we're making and show them what we have this okay. way. Well, we're, you know, we've worked really hard um, to show this. And so we were ready by having it. These are just um, face coverings that you can have with Patrick's art, but we're just gonna go on because we weren't here to sell you. We're just telling you what's going on. So they just work really nicely and it's fun. Artimprinted.com. So move on, Derek. Thank you so much. We'll take the next photo. Oh, nice. So, so two vertical garden walls. So we do a melange of things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Say it again. I'm not sure if that's the right word. It doesn't matter if it felt good. Um, it did feel good. A melange. A melange. A melange. So um, in order to make our business work, artists have to be creative. So not only do I do fine art, to people do topic. paintings, uh, we do murals, um, we do uh, garden design, uh, patio design, and also, um, living walls, vertical yes. garden walls, and that comes in two forms. Uh, we do them uh, with actual living plants, and we also do them with once living plants. Uh, they're preserved materials, uh, mosses, and uh, all kinds of good stuff. This one you're saying is a preserved, and it has a few plants, and we learned to do it a unique way. They look alive, but a restaurant doesn't have to take forever. So the next one, go ahead and move on to the next one, Derek, thank you so much. I always try to think, what's the nicest way to say that? You know? no, that's beautiful. Excuse me, Derek. Um, I know you're ready. Push the button. Uh, okay. Okay. So, thank you for that. And, oh, I don't um, think we have another image, so yeah. we're moving on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not nervous, are you? I'm not nervous. No, no. How are you doing? You not when good. I'm with you. You look good. Do I? Yeah, no, what's going on? I don't know, right? Yeah, tell me. I thought I saw that too. You know, I'm I looked sad. in the mirror this morning. You know, morning. I am mad that I married someone more beautiful than me. It's, it's upsetting. Um, I was going to paint a painting for you right now, but I'm not sure about the time. No, I can't tell you because I know they've given me. Enough. Okay, we have time. Here we go. Okay, hi everybody. Hi Jim, F, Keith, Michael, Arnoni, everybody. What's going on? So we're gonna move Wait. this. So give us just one moment, and okay. I know Patrick. So here we go. I love it. Romper room. I see Valerie, Keith, and I see Derek, and I see. <laughs> Ready? Here we go. <laughs> okay. Hi, we're back. Woo! Oh my god. Hi. So I want you to know we have we have guests who are here to help. Hi guests. Hi. Hi. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Oh, wait. One second. Well, there's more. Oh. That's okay. We're not afraid of a problem. We're going to have our lovely assistant come over. This is for. Come on over. All right. Now you're just giving them bomb. You're welcome. <laughs> Live guys, you can hit it. Okay. Nice. Remember, it's not how you fall, it's how you get up. Again, Ready? we rise. Here we go. Cocktail. Thank you very much. A shaker, because you should always have one. Huh? 
Yes. So I think this is the time when you start taking questions. Yeah. So I'm so going to right. have some questions thrown out. Someone will be sitting on that side, and we'll be working this out. So give me one moment. You'll see me move around. Do you mind grabbing that side? Right? Coming back over here. We're not afraid of a problem. Not even a moment. Hold on. We look good. Okay, Calvin, Calvin Klein. There. There we go. Perfect. Not afraid. Here we go. Okay, ready? Yeah. Good. Okay. Let's do it. Okay, great. Good job. Good job, team. You do it? So show them. Now, if you can see, hi, what is your lovely assistant? What's your favorite medium? Okay, so. These are questions. <clears throat> I'm, I'm my uh, the lovely assistant is a uh, what do you say? You're an outback. <laughs> He's from Australia and lives down the street. You remember that song from Alanis Morissette, y'all? You know, uh, meet the man of your dreams and then his beautiful wife, and that's Eliza. So that's all we can say about our lovely assistant is his beautiful wife. <clears throat> uh, Patrick is getting things ready. I'm trying to speed this up. We're okay. Just hang with us. Grab a cocktail if you have to get up. A little commercial work. Ugh. That's how, that's how things get done. Nice. We don't play. No nice. slay. Okay. <laughs> okay, hold on. Sunny has questions. Can you read some questions out loud for us? Thank you. Hi, Eliza. Hi. Okay, go. What is your favorite medium? Are you ready? Um, my favorite medium is canvas. <laughs> um, but um, it's <laughs> fantastic. Okay, ready? We're not. We're on. Right, right, right. Okay, we don't Cameron. play. He's back, y'all. Patrick, was, where like, do you take the most inspiration? Asks Kyle. Okay, just stand um, there. Move over there. You and know, stand it. Just uh, I find that inspiration in different places. Uh, one thing that. Uh, okay, I explain to people is that I'm a series oriented artist. So when I find inspiration in certain areas, I kind of pause and make a series uh, out of them. Um, I'm inspired by color. I'm inspired by uh, things that raise uh, resonance in a room. Um, I like to change spaces and uh, those, those are the things that inspire me. Baby, put what's, some glue up. What's your favorite project you doing you've it? done together? What? What's your favorite project you've done together? I would say, well, of course, the lifeguard tower has the most meaning. Um, but we did get to do uh, the team project the, in, uh, uh, and that was great. We were with these women for, for a year. Great. Patrick, the team project, or what? Oh, uh, the team project by far. Yeah, Lori Burns is brilliant. Um, and can you guys tell us what your website is? Oh yeah, sure. Marston and Brunt. Boom, Brunt. Marston, M A R S T O N, and Brunt Art Studio. Dot com. Boom. I feel nothing. Hey, uh, hold on to that. You know what I have over there, Mister? Hold on. Nice. There you go. Lincoln. Uh, hola. There you go. And what are you painting right now? Right now, I'm. I thought I'd surprise everyone and and kind of see. I was going to challenge myself to see if I could knock out a resemblance of a fish, one of my goldfish, and I'm really excited about it because this is a personal challenge, and there's nothing I love more in art than taking on a challenge. And you know, really, this goldfish is going to be great. So we're excited to see how he does. Let me see your timing, okay? Sure. Six minutes. Thank you. Six minutes. I wonder if anyone listening knows if we have any little more time after that. I think the cocktail was working. <laughs> let's, let's make sure. Sure. To Venice Art Crawl. Cheers, Venice Art Crawl. And to the art. And to peace. To love and listening. Cheers. To compassion. For calling people out, too. Sorry. <laughs> you know, it's not about placating these days. 
Mm -hmm. yeah, Will we be able to see the finished product on your website? Absolutely. <laughs> yes, that's a great question. And the deal is I'm putting down the first layer. I like to work in layers. I feel like it gives a painting soul. And so I literally, like I'm going to do right now, lay down my, my first colors, my first thought, best thought kind of thing. And then I give myself time to deliberate on my process and I work from photo reference, but I do like to also uh, take into consideration what I imagine. So there's a couple of uh, different aspects uh, that I keep in mind while I'm painting. So everybody, Patrick, how many fish have you done? Ooh, gosh, like probably 40? Yeah, yeah, I would think more, but go ahead. Uh, You're dripping, boo. Like, look, you dripped on the furniture. He hates it the most. <laughs> you know art. Anything for art. Mm -hmm. So look, you guys are getting something fun. Anything. I'd say you've done school. I think you're beautiful. <laughs> so let's talk about the paint Patrick uses. Uh, can I jump in on that? Yeah, you? please. That's will, you, will you jump in? Well, yes, I will. Actually, I'd like to kind of take jump it over. on you. Oh, yeah, go. Well, um, <laughs> Sure. I, I love, my favorite medium is actually um, all mediums. Uh, you know, uh, Rauschenberg said an artist is defined by the medium that is available to him or her. And I, uh, I've fallen in love with putting on a base coat of acrylic because it dries fast. And I don't care about the mistakes I make because I know it's my first layer. And then I continue with acrylic after that. But I also start mixing in other elements. And as I get towards the finished image, I'll add gold leaf or gold metallic paints. And uh, also the finished, by the time I'm finished, I'm doing the details with oil paint. So it takes a little bit of everything in my book as far as I'm concerned. How long have we been together? Ooh, ooh that's some old shit. Not Nineteen long enough. and a half years. <laughs> I love you though. He's amazing. Um, let me ask you. So we have two minutes left, guys. Uh, we are not going to run out of this quickly. We really want to thank Venice Art Crawl for constantly trying to push the envelope and do something new. This reimagined way to go on an art tour is fantastic. Great job. What do you think, baby? I think this is my best work. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what else questions? Um, well, oh, well, I can't answer that. That's kind of tawdry. I'll answer it. <laughs> to your Uncle Arthur. <laughs> Uncle Arthur. Okay, no, that, that was pretty good. Thank you, Venice Arquall. Actually, congratulations, Sunny Bach. And the rest of the team, David Stein, on and on and on. On and on. And listen, guys, we this want you to know that we have a new art, a new Venet, I know, what is it? Take two, a new YouTube show coming. We have finished our first episode. We have a lot coming. We are so thrilled to be a part of this. And as we grow in art and try to change the way it's looked at, um, we hope you join us and watch Patrick Marston's amazing head come alive. And uh, I get to make music and sing. So this will be great. We'll see you soon. And thanks to our lovely friends, Eliza and Lincoln back there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, I think we have more time, so hold on, let's do something. Oh, hey, listen, we don't have the YouTube yet. Someone's saying how to find us, but you know, just to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at uh, Marston and Brunt Art Studio dot com. Um, boo. Yeah. Honey, do you want to say hi to your people, your family, your sisters, everybody? Well, yeah, of course I do. First of all, <laughs> hi, mom. Hello, Mom, hi. Dad, yeah. Peter, hi, Polly, Jeffy. Penny, Lori, hi, hi. Yeah, Chloe, hi. Jeff, Bethany, Jeff, Bethany, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and Jan, so many good friends. Uh, but wait, 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 well. let's say that um, we got to do the sun oh, has gone to bed and so must I, I flit 
I fleet, I fleet, I fleet, I fly. Good night. Oh, we have to say bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Right here in our community, tens of thousands of households are struggling to have enough food to eat. Families with children, homebound seniors, veterans, college students, and people experiencing homelessness, plus the tens of thousands of people who've lost jobs, been furloughed, or lost wages due to COVID-19. You can help Westside Food Bank provide nutritious food for all of the people in need in our community by visiting wsfb.org and making a contribution. Every dollar allows us to provide food for four nutritious meals and those meals are needed now more than ever before. Thank you for your support, and please be well. The cock is. Ah, okay. Well, well maybe you say you don't. Oh, look at that feather showing up front there. The way it's gonna fall off. I hear anything. Oh, I am live. Hello, my name is Lori Talks, and I'm excited to be here. I live in Venice. I've lived in Venice for the past 15 years, so this is right up my alley. I'm honored to be here. Thank you very much for everyone who made this possible. I am going to tell you a story. It's a three chapter story and it's called Reimagining Life as a Successful and Thriving Tap Dancer in Los Angeles, California, particularly Venice. Chapter one, trading pumps for tap shoes, corporate business for show business. The story picks up when I'm graduating from UT Austin, I'm a Longhorn. And I was recruited by a Fortune 500 company and I'm working and everything seemed like it was okay. But after about five months, I started asking myself, self, could you do better in life? Now that you've mastered, get it, MBA mastered, now that you've mastered this, what else could I do with my life? Because really what I wanted to do was tap dance. And so I thought, you know what? I'm working 14 hours a day here. What if I put that energy into myself? Could I create something more meaningful with my life? Could I build something? Could I earn a living as a tap dancer? Hmm. Now imagine my family, they're saying to me things like, ah, statements like, so wait, you just spent two years matriculating through an MBA program. You recruited by a Fortune 500 company, you have a job, good salary, benefits, and you're gonna quit to move to Los Angeles, a place you've never been, to tap dance. And you're black in America. That's right. I'm leaving, I'm moving to California. Chapter, oh, and I'm moving, why? To reimagine the life that I know I could have. Like, why not? Why not take a risk? Because you know what? I kept thinking, when you turn 80 or 90 and you're sitting in your rocking chair, you don't want to have regrets. And I didn't want to think to myself, I didn't take a risk on myself. I didn't try. Chapter two. What's chapter two? Chapter two, guess what the title is? Sister, the horse is loose. Huh? Okay, so I'm living in LA in Venice and I met a girl named Chrissy. And Chrissy was a casting agent and she sent me out to work as an extra a couple of days. And so life as an extra I mean, the money, I think it was like 42, 45 bucks a day, not a lot of money, but I did like the exposure. But the problem was I never followed the rules. I would always just wander about, want to see what the celebrities are doing, why they eat lunch first or whatever. And so I got kicked off the set twice. She called me a third time and she says, Lori, I've got great news. I'm sending you out again, but you have to be on your best behavior. And the only reason I'm calling you is because I know you're a tap dancer and I know that you would love to be on the set of The Gregory Hines Show. Yes, ma'am, where do I sign up? Okay, so I'm on the set. 
It's early morning. All the extras are seated at these round tables. Gregory comes in, he says hello to everyone. All I could think to do was bring my tap shoes with me. So I hold up my tap shoes and he looks and he's like, yeah, all right, good for you. So I'm thinking to myself after he left, well, that didn't work. And because I moved here to earn a living as a tap dancer and I'm in a building with Gregory Hines, I keep thinking, what will I do next? What can I do? So lunch passed. I couldn't, oh, but all throughout the day, I kept talking to prop people, casting people, makeup, hair, anybody that worked on the set. I even made my way over to the director and they all said the same thing. You gotta ask Gregory. So it was after lunch. And once again, I wasn't where I was supposed to be, but I had another rogue extra with me. And we were, because it really is relevant. Uh, so, oh, Gregory, he's doing these costume changes, wardrobe changes and the lighting. And he keeps running back and forth. And I think to myself, okay, this is my moment. This is my chance. So I follow him and I follow him down this long, dark corridor and He's standing there I and mean, he goes out and I could see the, the, the light come in and he went to his trailer. So I stand there and I wait and I think to myself, I pray no one comes out and tells me you have to leave the set because once again, you're breaking the rules. And uh, after a few minutes, Gregory opens the door. He looks at me, I look at him and I ask the same question I'd asked all day long. Gregory, will there be any tap dancing on this show? Now, if you don't know Gregory Hines, he's got 40 credits, film credits to his name, Broadway credits and is celebrated as one of the most beautiful tap dancers on the planet. And he opens the door and I said, Gregory, will there be tap dancing on this show? And he kind of suggested yes. Right there, I just started tapping. And he walked right past me and I just kept tapping and he was getting down with what I was saying. And all of a sudden I said, Gregory, what do I need to do to get in on this? And he said, you just did. Rehearsal started on Monday. I filmed the show and that was great. Chapter three, tap. Okay, I'm being told to tap. So here we go. I am going to tap. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. Hope this is a good angle. And she will tap right now. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. very much. So I guess that's my time. I'd like to thank everyone who made this possible. I appreciate being a part of the festival, the Venice Arts. Thank you. I guess that's my time. Do I keep talking? Well, I'm waiting. You know, a message about our climate today, tap dancing is something that's so extraordinary. We can all share in it. It's a beautiful art form and it brings us all together. And as an artist, 
I love sharing my art. I have a podcast. Podcast is Lori Talks. So search Spotify, Stitcher, any place good podcasts are found for the name that is Lori Talks. Thank you very much. I think I'm finished. Are we live? Hi, everybody. My name is Randy. Oops, let me get this off. Hi, everybody. My name is Randy Amata. I'm a producer and keyboardist here in North Hollywood, and we welcome, we are very happy to be playing for everybody in Venice. Um, I'm joined here by my buddy Maddie Taylor, Paige Cooper, Chris Payton. Uh, we haven't played together in a couple months, and uh, uh, so we're pretty excited to play for you, and uh, we don't know what we're going to play, so we're going to be even more excited. So uh, let's get the show on the road. Hit it! Thank you. 
how we make music? Yeah. Hey, everyone say hi to Melissa. <laughs> Wait, can you see her? No, she's not. Um, we have technical difficulties here. We got it. We got it. No, we just we we just jam it. We play some songs that we know, and we just kind of like communicate musically. And um, is, any, anybody got anything to say? No. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Yeah, um, yeah, we're just getting together and um, just feeling it out. I can't really explain how we do it. We just kind of do it. As, uh, we call ourselves magicians because we're not. We have really no no way of telling you how to do it. But um, uh, I think we have a few more minutes. We're gonna play a few more. Uh, one more tune, maybe. Yep. What do you guys want to play? Something that feels good. <laughs> this happen. Thank you, uh, the viewers, for showing love and art for art and music. And uh, please support the uh, West Side Food Bank. Uh, special shout out to Sunny and for Melissa for making this all happen and bring us all together. And thank you very much. And up next is Brid um, Bridgetta Bianca. Right on? Cool. See ya.
Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Venice Mar Vista Arts Coalition Summer Arts Festival. My name is Quentin Ring. I am the executive director of Beyond Baroque Literary Arts Center. We are a literary space in Venice, and we're dedicated to supporting writers and nurturing new writing. We're doing that mainly these days uh, through our online workshops program. Um, you can check out more about those workshops at beyondbaroque.org. Uh, taking a writing workshop is a great way to pass the time if you find yourself quarantining. Um, and we are, we are presenting tonight our first ever online poetry reading. We have four sensational poets joining us. Uh, they are Bridget Bianca, who is the author of Be Trouble, a wonderful first book of poetry. Um, we have Jose Hernandez Diaz, uh, the author of The Fire Eater, also a first book of poetry. It's a great collection of surrealist prose poetry. We have Joseph Rios, uh, the author of Shadow Boxing, which is one of my favorite books of poetry from a couple of years ago. And we have Shola Wolpe, the author of The Conference of Birds. Uh, Shola has uh, really established herself as one of the great talents in LA poetry today. Um, so thank, uh, thank all four of you for being part of this reading. I'm a huge fan of your work. I'm really excited to hear you read in just a moment. Um, and thank you to our audience for tuning in wherever you are. Thank you for supporting the arts in Venice and Mar Vista. This is a fundraiser for the West Side Food Bank. So if you're able to make a contribution, um, it really does help a great deal. It's a great help to the neediest families in our community. Um, just a couple words on the theme of the festival. Uh, the theme is Reimagine. Um, that theme was selected as we were realizing that um, we were all being asked to reimagine our lives and our society. Um, but not only being asked to re reimagine society because of this crisis, but because the crisis itself um, laid bare the ways in which our society already need reimagining. I'm thinking, of course, in particular of the murders of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Ahmed Arbery. Um, these murders are only the latest in a long, long, long string of murders of black men and women by police and by white vigilantes. And I think inherent in this theme of reimagining, which touches on a huge number of interlocking issues, but inherent in this theme um, is the commitment to reimagining racial justice in this country. And inherent in that is the idea that we all as artists, as artist spaces, as arts communities, need to commit ourselves to the cause of anti-racism. Uh, we need to commit ourselves to saying Black Lives Matter. Um, and beyond that, we need to commit ourselves to doing the work of anti-racism. Um, so I hope you know you enjoy the show tonight. We have four very different voices, um, all speaking, I think, to this theme of reimagining. Um, but let's let's take the arts, um, let's reimagine the world, um, and even more importantly, let's put the work into changing it. So I hope you enjoy the poetry, and um, thanks so much for tuning in. Hello, my name is Bridget Bianca and I'll be reading from my collection, Be Trouble. Tonight's poems will all be dedicated to Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, all of our fallen, all of our restless, all of our weary. We stand with you, Black Lives Matter. And who will be next? We keep planting these black bodies over and over again, hoping they'll bring us fruit one day. But all I see are rows and rows of smoke. All I smell is tear gas. Someone is telling us to move on, to push our worries back into the earth. But what are we to do with these bones? We till this soil for the new season, forgetting last year's attempts. And there, these black bodies gleaming white in the sun. These bones just won't stay down. Hi, this is Jose Hernandez Diaz, reading from Norwalk, California for the Venice Mars Vista Arts Festival. Shout out to Beyond Baroque for the invite. Today I'm gonna to read some poems from my collection of prose poems called The Fire Eater, available through Texas Review Press and distributed uh, by Temu Press. Um, after I read from the chapbook, I'm going to read some new poems from the Southampton Review. So I'm going to start off with the lead poem from the book that was published in Southeast Review in February of this year, The Fire Eater. 
Fire performed his tricks on Hollywood Boulevard by the entrance to the 101 freeway. It was autumn. Just as he was about to inhale the bright flame, however, he slipped on a leaf and fell into the street. The motorcycle swerved out of the way and barely missed him. The fire eater quickly got up and jumped back onto the curb. He counted his lucky stars. One star, two stars, three stars. But there was no reason to go on. At least he felt that way at the moment. His family of circus performers had abandoned him. He would have to make it on his own. Perhaps he could go back to school. Who was he kidding? Eating fire was his only skill. It wasn't much of a marketable skill either. Maybe he could make it on America's Got Talent or get hired in the Vegas show. These were his hopes and dreams, but were they merely pipe dreams? For now, at least, he would have to be content with eating fire on Hollywood Boulevard by the 101 freeway. Maybe someone important would discover him there tomorrow. Maybe the flame would no longer scar his autumnal heart. The next prose poem is called The Fire, again with a theme of, a theme of fire, and is published in the Cincinnati Review. The Fire. A man woke up in a burning building. He ran to the front door. It was jammed. Then he threw a chair to the window. It shattered and glass fell everywhere. He was careful as he climbed out of the window. It was a three-story building. A preacher was down at the bottom, waiting to catch him. He jumped into the preacher's arms. On impact, they both transformed into pigeons. They flew away from the fire, far away from the fire. So the first three prose poems open up with the theme of uh, fire and flames, and this next one is called The Flame, and it was published in Hotel America in spring of this year. The Flame. A flame rode a skateboard to the corner liquor store. It bought a pack of marble lights. It packed the smoke and ignited a cigarette on its forehead. It inhaled the smoke. The flame rode a skateboard down Beach Boulevard. It did tricks on the board. It saw a lady flame leave Target and asked for her phone number. It was denied. The flame continued on the board all the way to Pacific Coast Highway. It began to rain. The flame pondered the redundancy of rain. Suddenly, it fell off the board and scattered into ash. The flame was no longer a flame. No longer a flame. A flame. Flame. This is Shule Wolpe, and this is A Brief History of Us. Chapter 1. You smack her with a 99-cent yellow plastic swatter, knock her dead to a far corner of the room, except that in a second or two her legs launch into labored twitches like an out-of-practice can-can dancer, boggy eyes blinkless in life flutter as she lifts one vein-swollen wing, then another, her ovipositor glowing its small Hiroshima. She shivers her antenna, wiggles her posterior zombie dance that lifts its holy hullabaloo and takes off in a ferocious buzz so stentorian it echoes from the old pine table legs and rickety mismatched chairs. Chapter 2 The housefly's palate, while indiscriminate by nature, feces, vomit, or your plate of beans, is refined in its after-death. They go for delicacies such as the white of your eyes. Kamakazi gourmets, they target the inside of your toes. Bellies bulging, they machine-gun zombie eggs into your open bag of chips, the cut melon on the chopping board, or fine lining of your baby's diaper. Chapter 3 Weapons of mass destruction gather dust. Tanks rust in the rain. TSA is disbanded while Arab, Jew and Hindu, Pope and Mullah, mothers and generals pool resources and brains to build a Lilliputian army girded with sharp scimitars the size of trimmed fingernails. 
a legion of zombie fly slayers riding tiny air horses to battle while we install screens on windows and pine for a stroll in the woods, sun by the ocean, even a catnap in that hammock right over there, out in the garden, under that tree, forgetting everything we imagined separated us, human from human. Hello everyone um, out there in beyond Baroque land. Um, my name is Joseph Rios. I'm a poet um, from Fresno, California, and I live here in Los Angeles. And uh, I'm really excited to be a part of this reading and always excited to be a part of any reading at Beyond Baroque. And um, really also very excited to hear from, from Bridget and from Jose, who I haven't heard from in a very long time. Um, and uh, and you know, Bridget especially is always a, a force, and uh, really looking forward to, to seeing those videos um, later on today. And um, I want to start. Um, I'm going to read two pieces. Uh, one of which is um, from this book, Latinx. Uh, it's an anthology of, of Latinx poets and writers that recently was released. Uh, was edited by Felicia Ro Felicia Rose Chavez. Um, the poet Jose Olivares, a good friend of mine, and Willy Perdomo is a longtime friend and, and mentor as well, and um, was, you know, I'm totally proud to have a piece in here, a couple of pieces in here, uh, and to be in with so many of my friends and heroes. Um, honestly, if there's one book um, I would recommend uh, to anyone teaching young people, um, it would be this, this anthology, like if if students are looking for uh, living poets, uh, living Latinx poets, this is a one-stop shop. So the poem I'm going to read, the first poem I'm going to read is uh, here in the book. It's called a Fellowship Application and uh, came from an actual prompt uh, for a fellowship that I didn't win and uh, <laughs> hopefully this didn't um, have something to do with that. But the, the prompt was, please provide an introduction to your work, 250 words. My response. My poetry comes from a big water truck, bouncing and exhaling smoke over dry molds of wheel marks made by other trucks that passed the same way sometime last season at the same packing house in a different no stoplight Central California town with another name that will be mispronounced in perpetuity, which is to say forever, as ever, and this error will be defended until it is deemed correct and most true. Amen. 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 This is the poetry of a man in the passenger seat of said truck. He's trying to light a cigarette amidst all the vibrations, and the damn truck keeps moving. Chewie's talking again. I gotta get his words on the page, but this match keeps blowing out. These poems, though, they want to be about something beautiful, like birds and shit. Chewie keeps talking about birds. One hand on the wheel, he leans forward to look up from under his cap when his other hand enters my space and fingers out like he's flying, or the birds are flying, or we're flying, or the truck is flying. We're all birds now, and I still can't get this shit lit. The water treatment plant is an entire ecosystem of migratory birds, he says. This poetry is for the birds. It wasn't until my third week at work that I realized me and Chewie are probably cousins. Some border crossing mess, a case of mistaken identity, papers and names on paper, it only counts if it's on paper, unfamiliar words that don't match faces. I could, but I could quote Borges again, but I'll chill. FYI, I just went over the word cap. Somebody baptized their first cousin and, like me, didn't realize it. Grandma's portside pre-9-11 mention is the only living artifact. Art is fact. Art are facts. The packing house is full of abuelas, full of art are facts. All forthcoming, all forthcoming poetry will attempt to revive dead abuelas and their art is facts. One of those decolonized sisters told me this hummingbird was my abuela. Okay, I'm with that. Henceforth, all abuelas are hummingbirds. Poetry should be full of abuelas, full of birds, full of birds who take you to the doctor and tell your teacher that you got diarrhea so don't trip if he's got to go to the bathroom more than once. Full of birds who know that you're, why you're passed out on the living room floor but still make you eggs and papas in the afternoon. Birds who scrapbook all your articles in local local paper about Division II softball and community college wrestling. Birds, old birds too busy dirty packing muscat and wonderfuls, birds that get diabetes, birds that watch professional wrestling and own cats with feline leukemia. 
I hate that my poetry has to be about this shit. But it's true. It's true, Bill Moyers. It's true, Harold Bloom. I'm not making it up, Don Cher. And I see you over there, Tom Lutz. The rivers in these poems got arsenic in them and not in a funny Cary Grant way. More like Bye Bye Thea Sissy way. Bye Bye Chicano Role Model. Bye Bye Ice Worker. Bye Bye Thea Cookie. And Bye Bye Coach Garza kind of way, way. And each and every night I'll write you faithfully, all of you. And maybe then I'll stop telling this tired ass story. But anyway, Chewie says I gotta go back to work now. And I finally got the cigarette going. As Sue's had a lighter the whole time, that bastard. I'll tell you this. Ain't nothing in the whole world like blowing smoke in the middle of a pl newly plowed field like this one. Punto. Neta. Bye. This next post poem is called The Man of the Antlers, and it was published in Bennington Review, and it was also read at Bennington College's uh, convocation a couple years ago. The Man of the Antlers. A man picked wild berries in the forest, ate them, and suddenly grew antlers. He was shocked. He ran around in circles. Why? Why? Then he saw a small creek. He looked into the water. He saw his antlers in the reflection, strong and sharp. Why me, he said. Why me? Then a bear approached him. He was startled for a moment, but then charged at the bear with force. This next prose poem was published in Hobart in uh, 2015. It's called The Red House. The Red House. The Red House has five windows. The Red House does not have any new clocks. The Red House has three Rottweilers, all of them named Samuel. The Red House has quiet afternoons, despite all the furniture. The Red House has Bougainvillea running along a brick wall. The Red House has a blue fire pit. The Red House has seven candles instead of lamps. The Red House was never yours. The Red House has a lime interior. The Red House has two roosters and an ant problem. The Red House never forgives. The Red House is not painted red. The Red House has three orange trees in the backyard. The Red House is not for sale. The Red House doesn't write during holidays. The Red House has doors as mirrors. The Red House, pale and drunk at night. And the next two prose poems I'm going to read to close it out are from my Man in the Pink Floyd shirt series. And the first one is called The Astronaut. The Astronaut. A man in a pink Floyd shirt woke up on his living room couch. There was a party going on in the house. The man in the pink Floyd shirt didn't recognize anyone at the party. He wasn't drunk. He tapped a man in a green sweater's shoulder. Hello, who are you, he said. He asked. I'm Gary, he said. Yes, but what are you all doing here, the man in the pink Floyd shirt asked. We are celebrating your graduation graduation from astronaut training, of course, the man in the green sweater said. Of course, the man in the pink Floyd shirt said. He didn't actually recall being an astronaut. In fact, he hated math and science. He was more of an arts and crafts guy. Besides, he had an incredible fear of heights. The next thing he knew, the guests were handing out glasses for champagne and a toast. They started chanting, speech, speech. The man in the pink Floyd shirt grabbed a glass of champagne, and stood in front of the eager crowd. He raised his glass, cleared his throat, and spoke. I'd like to thank you all for coming here tonight. I'm honored by your presence. I wanted to be an astronaut since I was a little boy growing up in the mountains of Arizona. I used to dream about existence beyond the clouds. Now my dreams are coming true. Reach for the stars, friends. Never let fear defeat you. Cheers to space. Cheers to all of you, he said. The crowd erupted in cheer, and they clinked their glasses together. They had long conversations until after midnight when they began to disperse. After everything was gone, the man in the pink Floyd shirt went to sleep and dreamt about another world's dawn, another galaxy even. An exasperated black woman said, fuck it. I'll do it. It is fall. I have recently buried a loved one. It is the morning after the election. You are disheveled and teary. You assume the pain in my eyes is yours. You hug me, a stranger. You say, it's so good to talk to someone who understands. And I don't remember speaking. And I don't remember your face, stranger. Later, 
I only realize I am crying by the look on my students' faces. This is not a poem. It is still fall. Someone drove past my window and shouted, fucking niggers, and only I seem to hear. It is a few days after the election. You come to me for confession. You are mad at yourself for being so naive. I tell you the word nigger is a threat to my safety. You are late and have to go and I am alone again. This is my life. It is spring. I have buried another loved one. I feel faint after yawning. It is months after the election. You are growing angrier every day. You ask me if I feel the same. I've been invisible, but now I was useful. So I say, I am a black woman and I am invisible again. This is not a poem. It is almost summer. You blurt out, ever since the election, you wake up wanting to kill yourself and you laugh. This is my life. It is fall. 194 black people have been shot and killed by the police. 73 more than the last time I read this. What will that number be by winter? This is not a poem. I had a student, Terry, whose father was shot in the head while lying face down with his hands cuffed behind his back. The police pursued him because he didn't have the proper reflective lights on his bicycle. This is my life. You may have noticed that I like to use my hands when I speak. This can be seen as aggressive and I might frighten you into killing me. This is not a poem. Do you understand how taboo it is for black women like me to go to therapy? Because we are supposed to be strong for everyone. This is my life. I am sorry that you only realized the world was fucked up when your sisters voted with their white skin and not their pink pussies. This is not a poem. While you vomit angst into my lap, forgive me for not holding back your hair in solidarity. This is my life, so I'm a little busy. A Saturday night. What do you do when you see lights in the rearview mirror? What do you do when a siren loops around your throat? What do you do when you are on the street in a group of four or more? What do you do when you are alone? What do you do when you know you don't have anything in your pockets that can hurt the officer? Keep your eyes on the road and find a safe spot to pull over. Turn that noise on your radio down before the officer approaches your window. Didn't they teach you in high school that four or more of you is a gang? Don't you know you shouldn't be out here alone? Don't you know that your skin was weaponized in the womb? Speak only when spoken to. Don't matter that you wasn't doing nothing. Don't matter that we doing this all the time. Don't matter that we don't be bothering nobody. Don't drop the G's from your ings. Don't ask questions. Ask permission to reach into your purse for your wallet. You should just clench your license between your teeth and smile while you are doing it. Not too hard. Black joy is suspicious. Keep your hands above your waist. Keep your hands on the hood of the car. Keep your fingers locked behind your head. Take your foot off the gas pedal. Keep your feet more than shoulders width apart. Keep your eyes on the ground. Do not stare defiantly into the officer's eyes. Do not call out in pain when his knee is on your neck. Go limp like a rag doll when they grab you. Do not bristle when the officer cups your vagina. If you ever find yourself being black on a Saturday night, don't. I'd like to introduce to you a very important poet, a poet who Rumi considered his master. His name is Attar. He is a, 20th, a 12th century Sufi mystic poet from Iran. And what I'm going to read for, uh, for you is from the Conference of the Birds, uh, published by W.W. W. Norton, which I translated. Um, it's very important to get the right translation. Um, the, it's, the book is the very entertaining story of the birds of the world who gather to seek their beloved 
Um, and of course, they go on this journey, and the journey takes them through seven valleys. I'm going to read uh, for you a little section from the Valley of Detachment. But something about Atar and this book, I promise you, you need to keep this book by the side of your bed because I promise if you open it at random anytime, it's going to speak to your soul and tell you something you really need to know. And something that I love about Atar is that he does not sugarcoat, but it's beautiful. It's beautiful advice. This is uh, a section uh, from the Valley of Detachment called uh, Council of the Learned Way. And they asked uh, the, this very wise man, um, uh, a seer of the way, tell us something. And he said, whether you spend a lifetime upon a throne or down below on a carpet of dust, You'll find that whatever was, is, and will be, down to the tiniest atom, good and bad, all are but a single drop in one ocean. Then what difference does it make? What came from what or from whom? The valley of detachment isn't easy nor smooth. If you fancy it's a breathe, that's because you are ignorant. If your heart's blood floods the road and forms a sea, still you will not have advanced more than a single step. If you walk myriad roads without stopping, it's as if you've taken just one step. No wayfarer can see the road's end. No one has found the cure for what must be endured. If you halt, you turn to a rock, despondent, immobile as a corpse. If you hurry and run, you never hear the call, enter. It won't do to stand still or to hurry, to die or to be born. It's difficult business. What's the use? It's, an, it's a tough job without a teacher. So what's the use? Expect and don't expect, silent seeker. Abandon greed for work, yet keep on task. Don't pay so much attention to how you're doing. Instead, expand the work. Don't value what you do, yet increase the doing of it. That way, if at the journey's end your labor has been useful, you'd have accrued a good deal. And if it was for nothing, so what? Now you will have eternity to make up for lost time. Abandon work. Yet work with abandon. Work little, but work hard at working too. How can you know what needs to be done or not? If only you could and could manage it too. Become independent and detached, whether you're a musician or a professional mourner. Here, the lightning flash of detachment thunders from a single spark. Get to know Atar. Get to know the Conference of the Birds. The next one, and this will be my last poem, it's a, um, it was a commission, recently commissioned by um, LA Metro. Um, they wanted to they asked me to write a piece basically as like a um like an ode to um the metro workers uh, drivers operators train operators uh, bus operators and um this is what i came up with i call it an ode to the essential for metro workers and their riders during the quarantine of 2020. an ode to the senoras in cloth feet and the guadalupe masks waiting at a bus stop together on Western and Slauson. They are a reminder that we've been able to smile with our eyes the whole time. An ode to their grinning eyes. 
An ode to the OG hustling on the 210, selling latex gloves, N95s, and photos of Kobe and Nipsey. An ode to the marathon we're still running. An ode to those who got off the bus too soon. An ode to the Guatemalan line cook, line cook at the Wilshire, Vermont, leaning up against a tree with his work shirt over his shoulder. An ode to trees that tall, swaying every which way, with roots so deep they come out in el otro lado, which is to say, the other side. An ode to el otro lado, and everything with hell in my translation. An ode to the, the old Chinese women on the gold line who wore masks and face shields before it was cool and mandatory. I'm certain they will outlive us all. An ode to elder wisdom. An ode to the transfer bus kneeling each time they get on and off. An ode to this simple washing, this simple and deserved reverence like giving up a seat, washing your hands, or putting on the damn mask. An ode to my mail carrier, Joseph, who plays music from his knapsack. His wife and daughter live out of town. One day a week, he plays with his toddler through closed windows and sleeps in a tent in their backyard. An ode to the stars over him not visible before the quarantine. An ode to Vida's hand slapping the glass against his. An ode to the flutter of joy in receiving a letter or seeing a healthy daughter organize her toys in the living room. An ode to my new neighbor, Anthony, who got into town in March. His mother, Anelis, stays in a nursing home where she was exposed to COVID-19. He takes the 76 bus to El Monte twice a week to visit her through a wall of glass. He shouts to her through the, through the phone and repeats simple phrases like, How are you feeling? And promise me you remember to eat. Even without traffic, it takes him 70 minutes each way. Before the diagnosis, they hadn't talked in years. Let's write an ode to mothers and their sons. An ode to forgiveness and healing forever. An ode to Germaine cutting fruit at Trader Joe's. An ode to Jeffrey cutting fruit at Superior. An ode to Karina cutting fruit at John's. An ode to Noe cutting fruit at H Mart. An ode to Noble from Smart Final who left his name tag and hairnet on the red line. An ode to names, their names. You know them now. I pray you do not forget them. I pray for bulletproof gloves, iron lungs, and hazard pay. An ode to organizers, an ode to unions and picket lines. I pray for a living wage, retirement, and good health to enjoy them. An ode to the metro workers moving through the front lines of this poem. An ode to the one who recognized me even with the masks and a half-empty bus between us. I saw her in the overhead mirror and she saw me. The yellow line has moved farther back but we still can say hello. I wanted to tell her this and I still don't know a fancy or poetic way to say it. I needed this ride. I'm glad you came when you did. Thank you. An ode to the essential phrase, an ode to the faith of countless riders standing on platforms and at stops who feel the same way. An ode to the operators. We know this now and we can't unknow it. This city will not get anywhere it's going without you. Thank you. So the last uh, prose poem I'm going to read from the collection is called The United States of the Moon. And it was published in Guest House in uh, December of last year. The United States of the Moon. A man in a Pink Floyd shirt fell asleep on a rocking chair on the moon. He had a dream about the government. The government gave him a salary of $235,000 per year because he was a famous astronaut. He was building a civilization on the moon. The nation was going to be called the United States of the Moon. His chair was still rocking as he slept. Fifteen of his fellow astronauts had come with him to start a civilization on the moon. They were from various Earth countries, including Mexico, Japan, and Australia. None of the astronauts were very good at poker. One of them was the same. The rest were common astronauts. Then a moonquake happened. The man in a pink Floyd shirt jumped out of his rocking chair. He bounced around the moon. It shook for an hour. When it was over, all that survived were the spaceship and the man in the pink Floyd shirt. He boarded the spaceship with tears in his eyes. He flew toward Earth, wounded but not defeated. Again, so this collection is available through Texas Review Press, and Tamu Press uh, distributes it. And also I have signed copies available through my DMs or email me at josehgz1984 at gmail.com. And I'm going to end by reading some new prose poems from the Southampton Review that was published this spring. The 
The first prose poem I'm going to read is called El Sombrero. El Sombrero. A man fell into the ocean. The water was blue and green. It was the beginning of winter. Luckily, he wore a giant sombrero. He jumped into the sombrero and floated along the shore. The inside of the sombrero was warm and leathered. The clouds spelled out the word ocean. Inevitably, the sombrero landed ashore and the man stepped onto the cool sand. As the moon rose, he sang a ranchera. He was very happy. He walked home beneath the moonlight, but left the sombrero behind. It was ruined from the water, but it had saved his life. And the last, the last poem I'm going to read uh, is called Enough, and it was published in the South. It's published in the Southampton Review. Again, thank you to John Baroque for the invite. Enough. You will never be enough. Not Chicano enough. Not Bocho enough. Not Mexican enough. Not Latinx enough. Not American enough. Not Californian enough. Not Southern Californian enough. Not LA County enough. Not Orange County enough. Not enough of a whole entity. Not enough of a clear sky. Not enough of a bottle of tequila. Not enough of a slice of apple pie. But you are everything and nothing all at once. You are a modern mariachi on a tangled road. Be vigilant. Exist. Again, shout out to Beyond Baroque. Thank you. When I was 13 years old, uh, my parents sent me to the island of Trinidad to live with my aunt and my grandmother. And it was for the, f it was for the first time that I had left Iran and um, experienced another culture. And it was the first time that I understood the idea of otherness. So this is a poem from uh, Keeping Time with Blue Hyacinths. Um, and uh, the poem is titled uh, The House on Stilt Legs. I have just arrived and the air is wet. The breeze lifts up my skirt to have a look. The neighbors file in, bring baked plantains, chickpea roti, goat curry so spicy, my eyes melt. They finger my curls, touch my long black eyelashes, laugh. In the street, boys hiss at my back with lips, tongue and breath. Young men emerge, skinny and dark, from among tall sugarcane fields, machetes in hand. Just for you, they say, and pull out long, clean, fat stalks, bleeding sugar from the cut. The four-leafed clover holds that line my, the edges below my bedroom ceiling are portholes to the stars. Fireflies come in with the breeze, turn my mosquito net into a green flashing southern sky. I tell them about Tehran's dusty streets and high walls, gardens where every tree steals innocence from eyes, where every rose offers her thorns to stitch mouths where crows blacken the sky, snitching on the comings and goings of the moon. I sketch in the air the bell jar in which I lived and almost died. Show them the roof of my mouth, where a secret grows like moss, the inside of my belly button, where the cord to my homeland's womb remains uncut. The talk. Lesson number one, no toy guns, no running in public, no hands in pockets, no outside voices. Act like you got the sense God gave you. Act like you've been somewhere. Act like you got somewhere to be. Act like you got a mama who raised you within an inch of your life. Don't you cut up in front of these white people. Do you want them to take you away from me? Tie all bags at the top before entering. Don't touch anything you don't plan to buy. Didn't I tell you to take your hands out of your pockets? Don't swing your arms when you walk. 
Take your hands off your imagination. You acting like you've grown. Mind your mouth. I swear for God. You bet not let me catch you doing something you ain't supposed to and you better not have nothing in your pockets. I don't care what they said to you. I don't care what the others get away with. They are not my child. I don't care if their parents don't hold their breath when they see your face flash across the evening news or their news freeze. Just bring your tail home. I don't want you out of my sight. Because if I can't see you, if I can't hear you breathing, then every siren is always headed in your direction. Every face in despair, every body on the ground, every bowed head in cuffs, every gasp for breath, every plea for mercy, every hand up in the air, every fist balled in anger or fear looks like it belongs to you and you are mine. But they can take you away from me. Don't you know that? So you've got to know better, do better, be better. And I know even that won't really save you, but what else can I do? So lesson number one, no toy guns, no running in public, no hands in pockets, no outside voices. Act like you got the sense God gave you. Act like you've been somewhere. Act like you got somewhere to be. Act like you got a mama who raised you with every inch of her life and get your behind back in this house. And don't make me tell you again. You can't spell patriot without R-I-O-T. They won't call it war, but we brace ourselves for attack. We stay ready so we ain't gotta get ready and yet we are unprepared. They are heavily armed. We are heavily harmed. The preachers tell us we are heavenly armed and they tell us to forgive. They call for peace and quiet. But we cannot quiet. We speak out riot. We come out riot. We lash out riot. We reach out riot. We shout out riot. And Martin said, a riot is the language of the unheard. Then James said, it is not the black child's language that is the spies. It is his existence. And before he was a Mary, Leroy said, let the world be a black poem. And Nikki said, maybe I shouldn't write at all, but clean my gun. And Malcolm said, revolution overturns and destroys everything that gets in its way. And Gil said, the revolution will be no rerun, brothers. The revolution will be live. What's up, everyone? That's it for the poetry for this evening. Um, I just want to say thank you to Bridget, and thank you to Jose, thank you to Joseph, thank you to Shole. Uh, you guys are amazing poets and amazing readers, and it's a real pleasure to have you with us this evening. Um, and I also want to say thank you to all of our audience for tuning in. Um, if you're interested in learning more about Beyond Baroque, please go to beyondbaroque.org. Um, you can follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, at bblitart. Um, if you go to any of our social media or to our website, you can find more information about how to purchase um, our authors' books. Please do support them. This is a very difficult time for writers and artists, so the more you can do um, to help them out by, by buying their work um, would be amazing. Um, up next, we have the Reimagine Art Show that's put on by the, uh, the Mar Vista Art Walk. Uh, please stick around for that. Um, and finally, one last thing. This is, as I mentioned before, a fundraiser for the West Side Food Bank. So please, please, please do make some contributions um, to them. It's, it's, it, your money goes a long way, and it's really crucial that we help those who are needy right now. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the evening. Hi, I'm Genevieve with Westside Food Bank. We are delighted to be part of the Reimagine Music and Arts Festival. To all the artists and musicians, congratulations, 
and thank you for supporting Westside Food Bank. To find out more about our COVID-19 response, visit wsfb.org, where you can also make a donation. Every dollar provides food for four nutritious meals for so many more people who now need our help. Thanks so much for your support, and enjoy the festival.
fears are still striving to cease.
Hi, Hi we're Lunar, Lunar, and we are coming to you live-ish from our studio. Performing three songs in response to the current events. The first song is called, Aren't We All? This year, due to COVID-19, Westside Food Bank's food will reach twice as many people as usual. Their nutritious food will go to over 200,000 local people. Included among the newly food insecure are visual artists, performing artists, restaurant workers, and others who have lost income and are seeking food assistance, many for the first time. Hey. 
please help our community of local artists by making sure Westside Food Bank has the resources to keep up its supply of nutritious food. The boat we build is strong and it is true. It carries us over the waters of deepest blue until the storm threatens us with deep regrets. And just keep me warm, wrap me up in your sweet secrets. Into the wind, into the rain, we will make it all the way back to a place where we are safe. Thanks for listening. Right now, we'd like to introduce live music at Time Warp Records with live painter Julian Montalongo.
feels like the rain It sings tragic But the tears will keep you sound It is magic And they seem hard to refrain It's your end Those bad urges in your brain soon be started. Yesterday, but all my friends did so I did it anyway. I look in the mirror and say, Who the hell are you? I'll be who I am today, but tomorrow, someone new. Tomorrow, someone new who. Tomorrow, someone new who. Tomorrow, someone new who. To be pressured by my peers I was everybody but me For so many years today I pray to no longer play Monkey, so monkey Do I am who I am today But tomorrow someone new Tomorrow, someone new who. Tomorrow, someone new who. Tomorrow, someone new who. Tomorrow, someone.
love me right Let's go to the park and fly a car Let my goodness soothe your appetite Every day, every night 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 Love and sweetest power is so polite Love and sweetest power we never find Waiting for another bite Every day, every night 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 gentlemen sunny war live on kxlu and we are live at time warp records did you say earlier that you sold your soul <laughs> yeah. did you say that earlier that's the name of the song that's in the lyrics yeah, yeah. did you but did you actually sell your soul um i tried to when i was when i was like eight because i wasn't progressing fast enough 
at the guitar as I thought I would. So. How did, how did you try to sell your soul? Well, I lived in Tennessee, so right. I, I read about... Because <coughs> it's like, I listen to a lot of blues and stuff already, like just through my mom and everything. So I had heard about Robert Johnson, and I was like, can you do that? Is that? So I thought that I had lived close enough to some kind of crossroads. So it was like kind of like a prayer, you know? I don't know. I think it worked. I don't think so. No. Did, did you not just witness what you just did on the guitar just now? As a, if it if it would have worked, then I would have been I would have instantly have been able to play it then. <laughs> so I don't know like, if it works like that. I think that's how it would work if it did work. <laughs> I don't know.
Hey everyone, welcome to the Virtual Mar Vista Art Walk, the first of its kind. We are called Westerner, and we're going to take a moment to introduce you to our videos. We're very excited to take part in this because Mar Vista is kind of like our home, and we love uh, performing at the Art Walks. Thank you all for supporting this event. All the money from the tickets go right to the West Side Food Bank, and that's going to help lots of families eat and stay strong and stay safe during the really uncertain time that's happening right now. And thank you guys so much for checking out our new videos. We'll be dropping a new release every month. You can follow us on YouTube and all the social media platforms at Westerner Band. And stick around. Up next, we have DJ Todd Sparrow and dancer Palm Daydream. Thank you. Bye.
Hey everyone, thanks for watching our music video. We've got new music and music videos every month, including <laughs> Dawn of the World up next. <gasps> ah, Brandon, skip me! Oh. Up next, Dawn of the World. That's my favorite song! Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Oh, and watch us, oh god damn it. And follow us on all social media, at Westerner Band.
Hi, I'm Genevieve with Westside Food Bank. We are delighted to be part of the Reimagine Music and Arts Festival. To all the artists and musicians, congratulations, and thank you for supporting Westside Food Bank. To find out more about our COVID-19 response, visit wsfb.org, where you can also make a donation. Every dollar provides food for four nutritious meals for so many more people who now need our help. Thanks so much for your support and enjoy the festival.
the sky comes down to the ground, letting go with love, and a cell phone rings, rings.
Peppers ready, prepare to flash. Ready, prepare to fly.
that we translate our imaginations into shared experiences. And it's through art that we can begin to reimagine our collective lives in the midst of a global pandemic and ongoing police violence and systemic racism directed at black Americans. As these crises have unfolded, we've all been forced to rethink ourselves on every possible level, whether it's the simple daily structure of our routines or the vast and complex underpinnings of our society and our economy. In the midst of illness, isolation, violence, and protests, we know that urgent changes are necessary. And in the opening of space for discussion to consider new horizons for how we live, we've realized urgent changes are possible. 
In tonight's annual Venice Mar Vista Arts Coalition Festival benefiting the West Side Food Bank, we're dreaming those possibilities into being. As artists, as individuals, as a community, we're imagining how the world can and should look. And in doing so, we'll lay the foundations for something new, a world, a life, a society reimagined. We hope you enjoyed tonight's event. Thank you for your support for our artists and your donations to the West Side Food Bank. Don't forget, you can still donate now. On behalf of the Venice Art Crawl, Spark, Beyond Baroque Literary Arts Center, and the Mar Vista Music and Art Walk, oh. we wish you peace, understanding, and a good night. Good night. Good night, good night everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank Thanks you. for coming. Thank you. <laughs>
city must work together for good. Work together for good!